Welcome to Clark Stadium, Edmonton, for the North American Soccer League matchup this afternoon between FC Edmonton and the Carolina Railhawks. Good afternoon. I'm Gareth Hampshire alongside Steve Sandor. Crucial game this for both teams, Steve. Neither one having won a match so far. Yeah, but both teams have scored some goals in their last NASL matches. Both both hit the net three times uh, in their last game. So we're hoping to see maybe some goals today. But uh, again, two teams that you wouldn't expect to be at the bottom of the table are at the bottom of the table. Let's take a look at the matchup. FC Edmonton, they're the players uh, warming up, uh, getting ready to play in the black and uh, against the orange of Carolina. The standings in the North American Soccer League not looking great at the moment. The one uh, fortunate thing for, uh, for both Edmonton and Carolina is there's just been so many draws in this league so far this year. So many single points are going out that they haven't lost maybe as much ground as they possibly could have. So, you know, we, uh, they, they're in a, in a good position. But, uh, but we have here, we've seen that uh, Carolina has got some offense in a 3-3 draw with uh, Fort Lauderdale in midweek. Uh, this is a team that, that can score goals. Brian Shriver is up front today, and that's a player with Fort Lauderdale last year who caused Edmonton all sorts of problems. Uh, scored, scored a bunch in the 5-0 uh, uh, playoff game against Edmonton last year. So Brian Shriver now with Carolina, and he'll provide an intriguing matchup for the defense. Now Edmonton, Edmonton as well scored uh, three times against Minnesota uh, in their last, uh, last match. Problem was they gave up four in their home opener. But uh, they did look offensively like they were, they were clicking. And uh, here we see a, a, great, a great moment here with Yashir Pinto dummying the Minnesota defense and threading a pass through to Sean Seiko. And there's some great, there's just some great chemistry that we saw up front between Pinto, uh, the Chilean forward, and some of the other players. And that's Sean Seiko delivering a great cross to Paul Hamilton uh, on a set play. And then the final goal, the uh, final goal that Edmonton scored that actually gave him a 3-2 uh, or a 3-2 advantage. You have Seiko sending a ball across to Pinto, who sends a perfect ball back across the box for Porto to put into an open net. So this is a, a team that can that can really click and uh, and and a, and a unit that can really click up front. Matt Lamb is also going to be part of that today. So we uh, so we uh, are going to see a team that is really. Uh, uh, hopefully clicking offensively and maybe see a lot of goals today. FC Edmonton really hoping this is the day they can get their season going home against Carolina at Clark Stadium. Let's take a look at the keys to the game, Steve. Well, I think the first thing you got to look at is Edmonton has struggled in the back with communication. We know that John Joseph Augustin, who's going to start, doesn't speak doesn't speak English. They have they have a problem. They have a problem sometimes. Uh, looks like. The, talking to each other, sometimes problem with the keeper uh, organizing things. And here's the winning goal against Minnesota in injury time, and there's nobody there on the post. If there's a player there standing on the post, as he should be, uh, this, is, this, is a, this is a ball that goes out into touch and the game finishes in a draw. But we've seen that a lot in Edmonton in the last couple of games where the defense hasn't talked to each other, they haven't communicated, and the goalie hasn't communicated with the, with the players. Um, we saw, we've seen some goalkeeping errors in the last match with Mahal Mishevich starting for Edmonton. And we saw that uh, we had uh, Mishevich spill a couple of balls. Uh, and you know, some of these are, are things that defense can't do anything about. They're sort of helpless to, to do anything about these sort of mistakes. We saw David Monsalve have an error against Vancouver on Wednesday in their Canadian Championship game. David starts again though today, and hopefully some experience can settle Edmonton down because there have been some key goalkeeping errors that can deflate a team when it's going not so well like it is for Edmonton right now. And confidence is a big part of this game. Both teams coming in winless. Edmonton's got to understand that that with a winless Carolina team, they are, they're going to have to to jump on them early. They're going to have to to establish some rhythm at home. Guys like Sean Seiko, who we see here, have got to to to, to develop that rhythm like they had against that win in Minnesota. Jump on Carolina early. Don't allow another winless team to build any confidence in the game and feel good about themselves try to get an early goal, try to knock them down early, and try to get the crowd into it. It's been a, been a difficult challenge. Kyle Porter, who we see here, has struggled with his confidence a bit. He did score an open goal, but we've seen him miss a lot of chances as well. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for this North American Soccer League matchup this afternoon here at Clark Stadium. FC Edmonton starting lineup. Well, a couple of force changes, uh, mostly because Bartholomew is injured and Hatchie 
is suspended. So that's the starting 11. Monsalve in goal. We've got Augustin, Hamilton, Rago and Lassonde in the defence. Liadam, Forta and Opong are the midfield three and the front three of Seiko. Matt Lamb getting rewarded for his substitute appearance last week and Yashia Pinto. Yeah, the interesting thing will be the same thing we talked about against Minnesota. A, mo a mobile defense, but a small defense. And that back line is going to be very small and going up against a team that's going to be physical up front against it. And we'll see how they've handled it. They haven't answered that challenge so far this season. When it, when it, when it comes to set plays, uh, balls in the box, they've struggled with that. Edmonton's philosophy is to go with a mobile back four that can move the ball. But so far this season, we've seen that physical mismatch uh, appear all too often against this, this Edmonton team. FC Edmonton against the Carolina Railhawks in North American Soccer League action. And it's coming right up after the break. Kickoff moments away between FC Edmonton and Carolina. Both sets of players in their own halves, just in a bit of a huddle here. Both of them looking to break out their season in this match today in the North American Soccer League. FC Edmonton will be attacking the goal to our left. They're all in black this afternoon, the new home shirts. Carolina all in orange, and the home crowd trying to get behind them. And it's a perfect day, a sunny Sunday afternoon, for the crowd to really get into this one. I'm Gareth Hampshire alongside Steve Sandor and we're just about ready to go here. Kyle Porter is going to kick us off with Matt Lamb who played well when he came on in midweek against Vancouver as a substitute and FC Edmonton under the blue skies here at Clark Clark. Just about to kick us off. The referee in one last signal with his linesman. For the, for the fans from Carolina and from other places in the States who aren't familiar with uh, Clark Stadium or watched any games last year from Foot Field, this is a shared facility. The Edmonton Eskimos of the Canadian Football League use it as a practice facility. So that's why there's Canadian football lines that you'll see on the field, which are a little bit of a distraction for the soccer fan, but they help the linesmen. We're underway. There's an early chance on the right-hand side for Antonio Rago. He'll just let that ball run into touch and he'll have a throw in. So FC Edmonton have the ball just inside their own half on the right wing. They're attacking the goal to our left. And nil-nil, we've just kicked off the first 30 seconds of the match. And in fact, there's a stoppage while one of the Carolina players uh, gets treatment very early on. And in fact, uh, some of the uh, training staff will, go, will come on the field and give him some assistance here. So. Uh, Looked like he uh, might have fell awkwardly there, Chris Nurse. Yeah, he didn't didn't really see it. It was away from the ball. Didn't didn't, didn't see him go down at all. But uh, he uh, went down on all fours there and was hunched over. And they called for help. And this is might be one of those things you get a, a cleat caught in the turf. You wear the wrong shoes on this artificial surface. Sometimes you can get uh, you can get your foot turned uh, just just by uh, no contact at all. You can see the conditions are windy. It's. Uh a nice day here, but a bit of a chill wind, and that might be a factor down on the pitch as well, because uh, it uh, it can blow here. At the moment, we want to get this game underway, though. That throw-in on the right-hand side is about to happen here. You can see there, 12 degrees, but uh, wind's approaching 40k, and so the flag's uh, moving around here so far. And the Carolina team we're seeing today bears very little or almost no resemblance to the Carolina teams that we saw play Edmonton last year. Uh, coach, former coach Martin Rennie took a lot of those players to Vancouver with him and they're doing quite well in MLS right now, beating San Jose in first place in the West yesterday 2-1 and uh, he's done quite a job rebuilding that Vancouver team in very short order. FC Edmonton in possession in their own defense with Rago finding a square ball to Hamilton. Hamilton tried to play one down the wing. It's gonna be a throw in for Carolina, they're all in orange, attacking the goal to our right. 
and FC Edmonton all in black with that smart blue trim, the numbers on the back you could see. And there's Hamilton, and he wears number 18, and he's the captain. He's wearing the armband again today, looking for a searching ball for Pinto, who won't find him. It's with the uh, Carolina right back, and that's a ball down the line, looking to uh, play that one in down the channel. Corey Eleniho, but it's going to run all the way into touch and will be a, a goal kick for Mansalve. An early chance for him to get uh, his hands on the ball and uh, he'll uh, take his time here. Nil-nil so far. And one thing for the fans, our Edmonton fans, to look for today in terms of a matchup, Zaskolowski and Brian Shriver up front for the Carolina Railhawks. Zaskolowski, I remember him scoring a hat trick for the New England Revolution against Toronto FC a couple of seasons ago. Uh, had a couple of great moments in his rookie season, then didn't, didn't replicate it in his trying to rebuild his career at NASL. And Shriver, as I mentioned in the uh, in the opening, has absolutely killed FC Edmonton in the past when he was with Fort Lauderdale last season. Scored a bunch of goals against Edmonton. Something they got to be wary about. Hamilton playing a long ball down the right hand side, and Rago gets a challenge in there. It's going to be a throw in to Carolina. The early stages of this game are going to be very important for the confidence of both teams. Neither one having won a match so far. It's FC Edmonton nil, Carolina Railhawks nil after three minutes of play. Throw in down the left hand side. A little bit of a disjointed start already with a couple of stoppages. Now this is a long throw down the line and that one's going to run into touch again. Carolina just getting the feel of this field, the AstroTurf, and already it's foxed them a few times with the pace of the ball and has run out for another goal kick for FC Edmonton. Yeah, neither team looks very settled at the start of this match. Uh, no one's really putting any passes together or had any sort of prolonged possession. Uh, it's almost uh, been a lot of uh, waiting around for throw-ins and goal kicks to come into play. Monsalve's goal kick headed on to the right-hand side by Van Leerdam. Seiko couldn't return the pass and it's a chance for Carolina to attack. Hamilton making a good interception though, playing a ball to the left wing. And here is Sean Seiko and he's got quite a bit of space in front of him here. Seiko's got to his left. Oh, he did have some support but uh, couldn't uh, find his man there and it's a counter-attack by Carolina who are getting away on the right-hand side, almost to the goal line here. There's a chance for Shriver to put the ball in the penalty area. That shot blocked on the edge of the penalty box. And there's another chance for Carolina. The danger's still not gone. Cross coming into the far post. Van Leerdam trying to play his way out of danger. Eventually finds Seiko, who play that ball up the right flank. Pinto's chasing it. He's got the pace to get there as well. That's an impressive little burst. And he's level with the edge of the 18-yard box on the right-hand side. Steps in field. Little interchange with Rago. It's back to the Chilean. Just prods a pass to the edge of the box and Porter. Porter still challenging for it. Unfairly, though, says the referee. Free kick given to Carolina. Carolina. You know, one changer, Adam West, is playing, and he wasn't listed in our starting lineup, but we see Adam West at left back, Antonio right, uh, Rago at right back, Hamilton and Augustan are in the middle of the defense, which uh, would leave which would leave Fabrice Lassonde out of the lineup. Fabrice Lassonde is not starting. He was listed in the starting lineup, and he is on the official sheet, so we'll, we'll have to see if that was a, a mistake on the coach's sheet or if, if there was a late injury. Uh, in, in, in warm-up that uh, that affected the uh, starting lineup. Porter on the right-hand side. He's beaten his man beautifully. Great pace to get to the goal line. Porter's cross. Seiko's at the far post. Puts his foot on the ball. Tries to get the curling shot away. It's deflected. And Carolina make the clearance. Van Leerdam heads it to the left-hand side. And Seiko gets the ball back to him. Van Leerdam to the left wing now. And Adam West. West forward to Seiko. Seiko with a chance to get it across. And he plays it to the feet of Porter. Porter on the edge of the area. Bit of a heavy first touch. He lost possession. Seiko's won it back. Good start this for Sean. Seiko, he's trying to find Pinto in support, Pinto penalized for pushing, I think it was a genuine attempt for him to get to the ball, but a good uh, good start for FC Edmonton, getting stuck in on here. Yeah, and it was good to see Kyle Porter have some, some good play on the right side there, skipping past the defender, being able to play the ball ahead and, and, and move into space. Kyle, Kyle sometimes struggles with his confidence a little bit, and sometimes early in the match you can tell if uh, how Kyle's going to perform, and when he has some, some decent touches early early on, he's going to be threatening down the wing. Nil-nil so far at Clark Stadium, approaching seven minutes. It's FC Edmonton nil, Carolina Railhawks nil. Header away from Seiko there, it's won by Carolina. Played down the right wing for them, but Adam West gets the interception in. Can't get the ball clear, though. Carolina still... Uh, probing away at FC Edmonton. Now Hamilton back to the goalkeeper and Monsalve clears through the middle of the field. Porter is beaten in the air and the Carolina 
Midfielder climbing on him, and it's a free kick for the home team. You see a little bit of wind there affecting. I know David, Mon David Monsalve, when he kicked that ball out, he got his foot underneath it a bit, and it had quite a bit of backspin on it, but that ball held up quite a bit in the breeze that we have here. Carolina playing the ball down the right wing as far as they're concerned. The left-hand side of FC Edmonton, and it's Augustin who comes across to head that into touch. Throw in for Carolina, taken and thrown into the middle of the field. There's a chance for them to play it through that middle of the defense. FC Edmonton not getting challenges in. The shot coming in there, it's deflected and charged down in the end. And it'll be Matt Lamb that will take that ball to safety and then play it back for Rago. And now Hamilton, they're playing their way out of danger. Rago in the end decides to put his foot through it, gets it to the halfway mark. Pinto is the one chasing that one. It's played out to the right back position though for Corey Elenio. Seiko's the man shadowing him and in the end the chip ball up the right hand side is aimed at the number 22 Shalovsky but it, Augustin comes across and clears that one another throw in for Carolina who are doing some good work down this right hand side in the early stages. Edmonton was, about, is, was exceptionally fortunate about a minute ago Nurse played the ball into Shalovsky at the top of the box and I don't think Shalovsky understood that there was no one behind him he was going to be in alone and he hesitated and paused and it allowed Augustin to, to make a desperate slide to cut off that, that path but I think had Shalovsky handled that ball cleanly Edmonton was, was breached he would have been in alone on goal. Carolina playing their way to the left hand side this time Hamilton making an interception and Matt Lamb twisting and turning before playing a square pass to the right and Rago, Rago down the line, it's a loose pass from him though, picked up by Nurse, who plays the ball to the right hand side but has given it straight away to Seiko, Seiko's got an overlapping run from Adam West, West just midway inside the Carolina half, plays the ball back for Seiko, Seiko into Dominic Apong, Apong's got space in the middle of the park, it comes back out wide to the left, West still playing it back inside for Seiko again. Seiko will decide to switch things, plays a long ball to the right-hand side and Rago stands on it, but then gets control of the ball, but decides to play it all the way back for Monsalve, who right-footed blasts that one out down the right wing, and Carolina win the ball back this time. It falls to Apong, though, who finds Porter. Now Apong again, and it's Van Leerdam. Van Leerdam, not a good pass to the left wing and west, and it's intercepted by Corey Alenio. Nil-nil here, we've played nearly 10 minutes, and it's Carolina defending the goal to our left, playing in orange shirts, orange shorts and orange socks, and FC Edmonton all in black this afternoon. Beautiful sunny day in Edmonton. It's Gareth Hampshire alongside Steve Sandor, and we've seen no goals so far. A good uh, solid start from both teams though, and it's Carolina at the moment, building in possession on the left-hand side of the field. Midway inside their own half, it's Stockley who's got the ball and plays it to the right and Corey Elenio. Elenio has drilled a long ball straight over the top of the defense. That should be easy for Monsalve who comes to claim that one nicely. It took a, a nice springy high bounce on it but no problems for him. It's still nil-nil. Yeah, another, another uh, player that uh, Edmonton fans might recognize is Amir Lowry playing in the back today for Carolina. He was with Montreal last year and uh, a player that a lot of Canadian soccer fans are familiar with. Uh, from his time with the Montreal Impact. Crowd not happy about Sean Seiko there, getting pushed in the back by Elenio. And that is going to be a free kick for FC Edmonton. No question uh, about the foul there. Came right from behind him, that push, down he went. And it's a free kick from this left-hand side, level with the edge of the 18-yard box. This is a good position for Seiko. He linked up with Hamilton in the game last week, and Paul Hamilton scored from a header. So they're well drilled on these free kicks. Yeah, look for Hamilton to make a run here from the top of the box. Uh, this is where he loves to get up into the attack and get ahead on the ball. He's uh, by far Edmonton's best player in the air. Seiko right-footed from the just about the left-hand touchline. He's curled that up to the far post. Nice ball. Porter tries to head it back across, but uh, couldn't quite get enough power on it. Maybe a little too high, and that's behind for a goal kick. Yeah, we're seeing... Uh, uh, Carolina's had some really nice spells of possession in the last five minutes or six minutes or so. They looked to have settled down a little bit before Edmonton. Edmonton's had some, some decent chances towards goal, but uh, right now Carolina's looking a little bit more composed than Edmonton. Very long goal kick by Ray Burst. Gets headed on 
and it runs all the way through to David Monsalve. Neither goalkeeper's uh, let one in so far. It's nil-nil, 12 minutes on the watch. We're live streaming on the CBC website again this afternoon and live on the team 1260. Thanks for joining us. I'm Gareth Hampshire alongside Steve Sandor. Nil-nil, FC Edmonton trying to get something going in the midfield with a pong. A pong's beaten in the air. And Nurse playing the ball to the left-hand side. Good uh, chasing work being done there by Rago, though, and FC Edmonton looking uh, much more lively in the early stages of this one. Putting in the tackle, it's a throw-in. And, you know, looking at the formations early on, it looks like Coach Colin Clark with Carolina is utilizing what looks to be almost like a 4-2-3-1 with Skoloski uh, as uh, up top and then being supported by, uh, by three players with Shriver being the most notable, uh, just a little bit behind. And uh, Edmonton in the normal 4-3-3 formation that we're used to seeing them in. Uh, but uh, we're seeing Carolina uh, being successful at moving the ball around, and I think it's been a little bit better in the midfield at keeping, Dom uh, keeping the ball. Pong playing a nice pass ahead of him to Pinto. Pinto with his visa now, allowing him to play in the U.S. Hamilton chasing the ball back to his own goal. Heads it nicely down for Monsalve, who picks it up nicely and rolls it out to Jonathan Joseph Augustan, who chips up a ball up the left wing. That wind noticeably uh, holding the ball up, so it's uh, blowing from left to right as uh, we're looking down from this commentary position, and it's easy for Carolina to clear, and the ball's again back with Monsalve in the Edmonton goal. You know, and that, that's a funny thing. Carolina's actually got quite an advantage here in the first half we're seeing, because that wind is at their backs. But you're, you're right, Garrett, that ball uh, was hit with some pace there by Augustan towards Seiko, and that just held right up in the air. Uh, and he had to wait and wait and gave Leno a lot of time, or Lenio a lot of time to uh, catch up to it and uh, really have no problem with the play. Monsalve's goal kick headed on well there by Porter. Matt Lamb couldn't quite pick up the pieces and it's with Nurse who plays a nice uh, pass to the left wing for Carolina. And the break for them now with Capono low, linking up nicely. Picked up again by Nurse. And Carolina looking for that perfect pass down the left-hand side. Rago digs it out from there, though, and finds Porter in the middle. Seiko takes it away from him. Porter runs to his left. Here is Kyle Porter. Overlapping run from the left wing. He's checked with the ball. He's trying to sneak inside two players, looking for the penalty kick. Referee was right on the spot and shook his head. And it's not given. That's uh, that's pretty pretty clear there. It's a good call by the referee, non-call there. But it was interesting that as Seiko made that play to Porter, he fell down. And uh, Porter lost his option in the middle of the park. Seiko was going to run. It looked like he was going to do a give and go. And then he fell down and gave Porter uh, no no option there. So Porter had to run into the box. And you could see he was stumbling and bumbling as, as he was going in there. And there was no contact. Uh, good non-call there by the official. 15 minutes on the watch and still no goals with David Monsalve in possession getting the start in goal again for FC Edmonton and he's just going to play this out to Augustan edge of the penalty area Augustan playing in the middle today partnering Paul Hamilton the captain Augustan nice pass forward to Seiko Seiko receives the ball well but plays it back to Augustan Augustan this time switching play to the right wing. That's a laser of a ball to find Lamb. And Lamb just uh, plays that one down for Rago. Rago sliding in all the way back to Monsalve. Monsalve takes it onto his left foot and tries to drill it down the line. Van Leerdam gets a touch. Seiko challenging for the ball with Corey Elenio. Elenio just beats him. Nurse playing it forward to Shilovsky. His pass goes astray. And Adam West making a charge down the left-hand side. Tried to play the pass down the line just ran it into touch it's a Carolina throw in which Shriver takes and plays back to Elenio Elenio is going to switch play to that left wing the header back across the face of goal claimed easily by Monsalve still nil nil yeah and it's pretty clear when you see the Carolina backing off on the goal kicks it is definitely a 4-2-3-1 what they're playing they uh it's an interesting formation because it's not something we see very much in, in the nasl ranks and you know edmonton last year playing a 4-3-3 was a bit of an anomaly because this really is if you if you'd ask people a 4-4-2 league i think uh most of the coaches utilize a, a, a fairly straight 4-4-2 system and uh so when we see teams deviate from that it's a little interesting to watch fc edmonton with a free kick from the 
right wing this time. The referee just making sure the ball positioned in the right spot in from that touch line. Just inside the Carolina half, FC Edmonton attacking the goal to our left. Remains nil-nil so far. It's Sean Seiko on the ball from this dead ball situation. And he's going to take this right-footed. The defenders have stayed back for this one, but Porter could be the target there. The ball whipped into the near post. Seiko trying to win it back on the edge of the area from uh, Elenio, but Elenio's the man that clears it. And Hamilton will patrol this one down the left-hand side and control it nicely for FC Edmonton in the left-back position, and he'll right-footed drive that ball forward. Porter getting a flicked header at it, and Pinto challenging for it, and he's done well to win possession there. Although the free kick given against him, that's not another popular decision from the referee. Free kick against Pinto, who claiming he was pushed and should have, in fact, got the free kick, but it goes the way of Carolina. I wonder there with that last free kick that Edmonton had with a low drive into the box if uh, they've realized that with this wind it might be a little bit difficult to pop a, pop a high ball into the area and have that uh, go in with any kind of power. And so they're just putting his arm out. That's what the call was for. Looked really to be six of one and half a dozen of the other, but the referee gave it the way of Carolina. And the score is nil-nil and the resulting free kick happens right now. Middle of the field, just inside the Carolina half. Played to the left wing, headed down by Rago, who won it well. Augustan trying to find a Pong, still in the Edmonton defense. Augustan on the right-hand side, trying to play the ball down the line, but conceding a throw-in to Carolina on their left wing. Midway inside the FC Edmonton half, 19 minutes gone, goalless so far at Clark Stadium. Carolina. Switching play to the right wing this time. Elenio's made a break on that right side, but they play it to Shriver. Shriver's got the ball on the right wing. Tricky customer. Shriver's chip shot ball over the top this time, though. Cross comes shot, easily picked out by Monsalve, who bounces it a few times in his hands and then just rolls it outside the penalty area and plays it to the left wing. It's uh, gone quite a way astray. Pinto had tried to make room for him, but that goes into touch for a throw-in on the halfway mark for Elenio. He's uh, stolen a few too many yards for the ref. P Pinto is lined up against the last line of defense there. And this is something we've seen Edmonton try with the long kick and then Pinto go for the sprint and time that. But uh, with this win, that makes it a hard thing for the keeper to time. Shriver stepping inside a Pong, beating him with a little bit of skill there and then getting tripped. So a free kick to Carolina. Mike Palacio over the ball here. This is uh, just in from the right-hand touch line. Midway inside the Edmonton half. About 10 yards outside the box. And you can see just uh, not much a Pong could do could get to get out of the way of that one. No cards given. Nil-nil, 20 minutes gone. Palacio and Zimmerman, the players over the ball. This is where Edmonton struggled this year on these set pieces. Left-footed Palacio curls it towards goal, and it looked dangerous for a moment, but just drifted out. Nobody got the touch. Goal kick for FC Edmonton. The one thing, though, that Edmonton has going for it is that uh, for the first time in a few weeks, they're, they're playing a team in Carolina that doesn't have that kind of massive height advantage that, uh, that we've seen uh, uh, other teams have against them in the back. So this is uh, a little bit of an equalizer in the sense that uh, Carolina don't have that big, big target man like uh, we've seen, uh, uh, especially a team like Minnesota with the Twin Towers they have up front with Bracalello and Amani Walker. Monselve has the ball in his hands again for FC Edmonton. Nil-nil so far. Tries to half volley this clearance with the bouncing ball. Van Leerdam helping it on through the middle. It's cleared back by Carolina. Van Leerdam winning the free kick, though, in the middle of the field. I think we were talking about uh, some ticky-tack challenges there. I think that was one that went Edmonton's way that was uh, uh, a 50-50 ball. And I think Lowry's getting talked to by the official simply for saying, well, was that a foul or not? Free kick taken quickly. Van Leer down to the left wing. Adam West. West, edge of the area, slips a ball in for Seiko, tries to beat his man. Seiko, square pass for Pinto. Pinto onto his right foot, tries the shot, charge down. Upon playing it to the right-hand side, and uh, Rago's moving backwards, though, still inside his own half at this point. And Apong 
dispossessed now and Hamilton can't clear it properly. Amir Lowry playing it through for Carolina, but again that ball running away in the wind and it's out for a throw into Edmonton. Wasn't uh, very good from Lowry there. Uh, Hamilton had to panic uh, I, when, uh, when that ball was played back from a pong. Uh, and put him in no man's land and the ball came right back to Lowry in space and he had men running forward if he would have just uh, stayed in that lingered on that ball for a second and weighed up his options he might have played a better ball through Hamilton moving back towards his own goal but will let that ball run out for a goal kick to FC Edmonton 22 minutes on the clock nil nil so far no real clear cut chances at both ends and the stakes very high for both teams, both looking for their first win in the North American Soccer League. Monsalve with the goal kick from the right-hand edge of the six-yard box. A Pong flicks it on, and Van Leerdam challenging the bouncing ball. It's up in the air again, and a Pong is the guy who gets control of it. To the left wing and Seiko, now Adam West. West left-footed plays a ball inside that left channel. He's looking for Porter. Porter gets a touch to it and wins a throw in for FC Edmonton. We're attacking the goal to our left. It remains nil-nil so far, but promising situation for here. West finding Seiko. Seiko with the ball at his feet. Inside him is a Pong. Middle of the field, Dominic Pong looking to switch play to the right-hand side. He was trying to find Matt Lamb, but it's a straight pass and cleared by Carolina. Once again, Hamilton letting the ball run behind him all the way out for a goal kick, nil-nil so far. And you know, there is an interesting spectator that uh, is in the crowd today. Uh, and FFC Edmonton's former coach, Dwight Lodevegas, who was uh, running this team in 2010, uh, is in the crowd, saw him speaking with some of the supporters before the game. And uh, it's interesting, he's been here for about a week now. Uh, he was at uh, the game Wednesday against Vancouver in the Canadian Championship as well, taking the game in. Hamilton challenging for the ball on the edge of the penalty area there. And it drifting through again to Monsalve. Approaching 25 minutes, goalless game so far. We're live on the Team 1260 and streaming live on cbc.ca slash Edmonton slash soccer. I'm Gareth Hampshire alongside Steve Sandor. Seiko doing well to win possession back for FC Edmonton. Finding Hamilton and now Augustan, who's looked good so far in the game. Augustan's pass to Adam West. He gets it back, Jonathan Joseph Augustin. And now Monsalve, back to Augustin. Now you can follow the Eddies on facebook.com slash FC Edmonton, at FC Edmonton. Carolina trying to build down their left wing this time, but in fact the ball out of play for a throw in which Rago takes. Doesn't get the ball back, but it drifts towards Hamilton, who now purposefully drives this one forward down the right channel. Carolina just deciding really to clear their lines and blast it into touch. So certainly the pressure beginning to show here. Still nil-nil, but Adam West with a throw in. Left-hand side, he's found Van Leerdam in space. Van Leerdam, no one within 10 yards of him, really. And he'll drill this one up to the edge of the penalty box. Dealt with well by the Carolina defense. Nurse again bringing the ball forward to the left-hand side. Lowry does very well, recovering from a poor pass and getting past two players. And on the left-hand side, it's Capono low. Left-footed cross to the far post and a good one too, but picked out of the air by Monsalve. Crowd claiming Monsalve was bumped after the play. Referee lets play go on. West with the ball over the top, looking for Pinto, headed away by the central defender Sam Stockley and it's Corey Elenio who takes the ball busily away down the left hand side. Still nil nil, ball in behind the right hand side of FC Edmonton there though, Shalovsky, Shriver's on the far post on the right hand side looking for a cross from that left wing, it goes towards Shriver but it's a clearance by West and now Seiko, good game so far, it's end to end, Seiko Turns back towards his own goal though, complaining about the lack of support in front of him, in the end pushing the ball to the right wing and finding Rago, just in from that touchline on the halfway mark. And couldn't find Matt Lamb really well, and Lamb loses out, and Carolina getting possession back again. We haven't said Matt Lamb's name very much today, he's barely touched the ball after what I thought was a, was a pretty effective uh, a substitute of, uh, series of substitute performances he's had recently. Shriver with a promising situation for Carolina, playing the ball to the left-hand side. 
Ghosting in from the touchline, comes in the shot, charge down. It's going to be a second attempt. And this one goes over the uh, angle. But uh, Carolina with some good possession here. Both teams have, uh, have looked lively in the first 27 minutes, but no goals. Yeah, it's one of those, those situations where they get to the final third, things seem to be falling apart. They are, uh, they're having some decent spells in midfield, but uh, really neither goalie has had anything to worry about. Uh, you know, that was probably as good a scoring chance we saw, Amir Lowry sailing that shot over the bar. But uh, that was probably as close as either team has come so far to troubling with e either keeper. Monsalve plays the ball to the left-hand side and Seiko. Seiko in field to Van Leerdam. West chipping this ball up towards Pinto. He misjudged its flight. And it's in the midfield again. Another battle for Van Leerdam. Pinto helping out this time, winning it back. And is climbed on by Nurse and gets a free kick for FC Edmonton. But I, but I will say that with this wind being in Edmonton's face right now, uh, that uh, if they get to this half uh, nil-nil, they should be pretty happy because in the second half, they're going to have a fairly decent advantage when that wind's going to be at their backs. And I think Carolina's got to press to try to get something uh, to take advantage of, uh, of that wind because it is it's actually significant. It's playing a role in this game. Shalovsky on the left-hand side, interchanging well there but the cross coming in from low easily dealt with by Monsalve 28 minutes on the watch and it's FC Edmonton nil Carolina Railhawks nil Monsalve kicking this one out of his hands down the left wing again Seiko traps the ball gets away from Corey Elenio and now plays it to the right wing looking for Lamb been a little bit stranded out there Lamb and again he chases a ball that wasn't quite close enough for him it's actually been unusual. We're seeing Lamb in the middle and Pinto out on the on the left side in that 4-3-3, the top three. Uh, normally, we're used to seeing uh, Matt Lamb playing on one of the sides and Pinto playing in the middle. So it looks like they've switched up a bit. Nurse in the middle of the field. He's dispossessed. There's a chance for Seiko to break here. Seiko straight through the middle. He takes it in between two players, but Elenio recovers and pushes the ball back to the Carolina goalkeeper. Well, Seiko did have support but decided that he wanted to go it alone. And in the end, Lamb concedes a free kick, and it's a Carolina ball. It looked like Stockley, the center de central defender, well, he did fall down, and it was Elenio who caught uh, Seiko from behind. I think when he when Seiko saw the central defender fall down, he thought, oh, I can I can go through the open door here, but he just didn't have enough of an opening. Elenio was back covering, and yeah, that was probably a ball he should have sprayed out wide to, uh, to build the attack, but uh, I think it got just a little too tempting when he saw the guy right in front of him fall down. We've played half an hour and there have been no goals so far at Clark Stadium. FC Edmonton nil, Carolina nil. Throw in on the right wing for Antonio Rago. Midway inside his own half. This is up to the halfway mark. Pinto gets a flick on it, but Capono low playing at that one down the left wing for Carolina. Headed away by Augustan for FC Edmonton. Carolina still in possession. This time playing a ball over the top of the FC Edmonton defense, but easy for Monsalve to claim. And we'll see here, David Monsalve's last couple of kickouts have been low in nature. He's tried to almost hit line drives here. Here it is up in the air and into that wind. Once again, the wind holding it up a bit. Seiko winning a free kick. The defender, Corey Elenio, a judge to have pushed him. And it's with Van Leerdam. Again, they've looked for that diagonal ball to the right wing, and no one's really had the power to find Matt Lamb yet and once again Carolina defending their lines well and starting off with a counter-attack down the left-hand side and getting themselves a throw in this is midway inside the FC Edmonton half it's Shalovsky as touch lets him down and Porter is back in the midfield to win that back for FC Edmonton West with a first time pass to Seiko ahead of him Seiko pushes it back to West left back position midway inside his own half and now Porter Porter's dropped deep in the midfield Wide to the left and Seiko. Seiko moving back into the middle and Apong. Apong going backwards to Augustin. And now Monsalve. Monsalve will play this one long down the right-hand side. Again, looking for Lamb or Pinto or a combination. But it's the Carolina defense that wins the ball. And out it goes for another throw-in for FC Edmonton. You know, we're seeing Porter in the midfield today, which is a bit of a change. And Matt Lamb up front, which is a little bit of a change than what we saw in the last couple of times that Matt Lamb's come in games. Matt Lamb, to me, is more effective when he's in the middle of the park, when he's allowed to, to or, or at least on the wing, but in behind the strikers. 
where he's able to run with the ball at his feet and then play with the ball at his feet. But uh, I wonder if that's a change that uh, Coach Harry Sinkrabin might think about as, as this game moves on because uh, Matt Lamb has been isolated up there, up front, and he really hasn't seen a lot of the ball at all. There's West with a long boot over the top, Pinto chasing it. Goalkeeper comes out of his penalty box to clear it. Does it well, Ray Burse, and it's a throw-in for FC Edmonton, the right wing. Lamb finds Pinto. Pinto gets past his man, plays the ball wide to the right, and Porter right on the goal line. Porter puts in the cross. Pinto's shot saved by Burse, who makes the clearance himself. Crowd appealing for a push in the back of Pinto. That's some of the best attacking play we've seen from him since he's uh, joined FC Edmonton. He's still down and needing a bit of treatment and they're going to put the ball into touch at some point here to do just that. And in fact, FC Edmonton playing on. There's what happened. There's the strike. Goalkeeper gets down well and Pinto challenged from behind after the play. And now the stoppage happens. The ball into touch. The referee will go and Take a look at Yashir Pinto and see what he needs for treatment. It was interesting, though, that it didn't seem that uh, anyone in FC Edmonton, player-wise, was paying attention to the fact that Yashir Pinto had gone down and was clutching his leg, and whether that's uh, a situation where they actually didn't see him or they didn't believe him. And uh, that's a little bit uh, concerning when you see that because it went on for a good 10, 15, 20 seconds that uh, Pinto was down and Edmonton had the ball and had plenty of chances just to put that into touch where you know you're going to get the ball back from Carolina, but uh, they chose not to. And, uh, you know, they have a player who's a mile offside, so they can't even play up front anyways because he's laying, he's laying down there right by Ray Burse. More than anything, looked like he might have just fallen awkwardly there as he got the shot away. He fell down at the same time, shaking his head as he's uh, getting some treatment. Meantime, Paul Hamilton been in discussions with the coach, Harry Sinkgraven, on the touchline. Pinto's limping, walking a little bit gingerly there as he uh, goes off the pitch, maybe for a bit of the magic spray. Yeah, and Ray Burst, a really good save, former MLS goalkeeper. Uh, you know, a guy who obviously wants to make it back to Major League Soccer one day. But uh, he gets big, gets low, takes away the low part of the part of the goal, and he is actually on top of Pinto. He's charging that ball down as he sees that 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 low cross come to Pinto. He reacts well. He doesn't stay back in the net to, to allow the, the shooter more of an angle. Well, well done. If Pinto wants to score, he needs to get that ball up and uh, or chip it over uh, the keeper. Uh, but he kept it low and, and really. Uh, really made it a little bit easier for Ray Burst than it needed to be, but he didn't get a lot in that shot. Tried to side foot it in. Nil-nil and it's Seiko on the left wing and he is uh, penalized for a foul on Corey Elenio. Free kick for Carolina then. About 10 minutes to half time, a little bit of stoppage time. Elenio finding Lowry. Lowry back. Going back to the defense, Stockley all the way to Burse, who made that save from Pinto, and it remains nil-nil. Burse's clearance through the middle, headed on by Augustan and headed out by him. Throw in for Shriver, looks for Shalovsky. It's headed away from him by Augustan again. Another throw in for Carolina. They've worked this ball well all the way to the goal line, and it's another throw in for Corey Elenio. I have to say, in the setup that Carolina is using with Shalovsky being the guy up front, He's looked a bit isolated at times. He hasn't got the, in that 4-2-3-1, maybe the, the support from the other three that uh, that he needs to be getting uh, because he's not a big, big man. He's not a true target man, and he's, uh, he's a tough guy when he's up there by himself because it's a tough situation for him when uh, he doesn't have that physical advantage. Lenio dispossessed right on the corner flag for FC Edmonton, and they managed to get the ball for Van Leerdam, and he clears it up the left wing, and you can see again the ball being held up by a very strong wind here at Clark Stadium this afternoon. About nine minutes to half time, still goalless. Another throw in from the right wing for Carolina here. And really, if anything, it looks like it's been increasing in velocity as the game has been going on. It, you know, 10, 15 minutes before kickoff, it, we were talking about what a beautiful day it was. And uh, this wind has been picking up, picking up, picking up. And uh, we're seeing it affect the game more and more as the half goes on. Offside flag up against Carolina. Pinto clearing the ball anyway, but the free kick with FC Edmonton, so the Chilean striker back on the pitch, the closest we've come to a goal so far, but still goalless. And Monsalve with the ball, definitely uh, 
Carolina will know that this is their advantage this half playing with the wind because again as that ball goes in the air starts to drift and get uh, buffeted back by the strong winds we're seeing this afternoon. But that means Carolina only has about eight minutes left to take advantage of this wind because if they go down uh, or they go to the half at nil-nil, Edmonton should, should be pretty happy considering how we've seen the wind affect balls, long balls that they tried to play down the field. Uh, just held, held it up totally. And uh, when Edmonton gets that advantage of having that wind at its back, uh, this is something Carolina needs to take advantage of before they go to the room. Zimmerman with a free kick from the left-hand side this time for Carolina. And midway inside the FC Edmonton half, the players all jostling for the position on the edge of the penalty area. This one's going to be drifted in into the box from that left-hand side. It goes to the far post. It's very deep, too long, over the top, and into touch. Goal kick Edmonton. Yeah, this just no one had a chance at that. I uh, wasn't really sure if he's going for goal or not or if he's trying to put a cross in, but it, it doesn't matter. You need to have a 10-foot-tall striker to get to that ball. It's Gareth Hampshire and Steve Sandor live on the Team 1260 and streaming live on cbc.ca where all the games will be this year, the home games for FC Edmonton. And nil-nil so far, about seven minutes to the break at halftime. And once again, Augustan running that ball into touch and putting it out this time for a corner kick. Chance for Carolina here from the right-hand side. Every single black-shirted player for FC Edmonton back in the penalty area. Defending corners has been a bit of an Achilles heel at times this season. This corner from the right wing goes up to the far post. And it's a flicked header away by Augustan, who's done well in this game. And it's out for another corner from the opposite wing, from the left-hand side, which Lowry places the ball on the spot, but it's going to be taken by Zimmerman, who will want to make amends for that strong free kick moments ago that went way over the bar. Nil-nil the score at Clark Stadium, Edmonton. Corner for Carolina. The goal to our right comes in from the left wing, and there's the header towards goal, and it goes behind, and it was a very good chance for John Krause, who got his head to the ball but couldn't hit the target. Yeah, it's something that we've seen all too often with uh, FC Edmonton this season on defending corners and set pieces deep in their own end. Wide open header here. Uh, Kraus actually should get this on goal. That, that, that uh, is, is an open header. He wins the, wins the ball, uh, has, has a clean, clean chance at goal, and uh, really needs to have that on, on goal, and that's a missed chance for Carolina. Kyle Porter was about to take the ball past his man there. When the hand was stuck out, the referee wants a word with him. The free kick's been given to FC Edmonton. And I think the referee reaching for his yellow card as well. So Krause's afternoon just got a little bit worse. He's the guy who just had a golden chance to give Carolina the lead. And now the handball results in a yellow card for John Krause. Free kick for Edmonton here. This is a good position for them. About 10 yards inside the Carolina half, but uh, Hamilton forward for this one. I wonder if you, with this win today, that if you have to drive this in low now and see if you get a bounce and maybe get this in the box, or if you, you pop this up and it becomes a jump, jump ball in the wind. Seiko plays it short for Lamb. Lamb going towards goal, driving it, but a bit of a bobbler. And it was easy for the goalkeeper. It bounced in front of him, but uh, an easy gather for him there. I don't think Lamb is meaning to actually shoot. I think he's trying to hit that in there and maybe have that hit somebody and, and uh, you know, create problems and have a ball bouncing around the box. I think driving it in low with, with the wind that we've seen is, is the way to go. But uh, I think that's a situation where Carolina is smart. Let everyone get out of the way and uh, let Ray Burris have an easy handle there. Pinto trying to work his magic down the right-hand side, winning a free kick for FC Edmonton. About four minutes to half time. And Rago has the free kick right on the halfway line. Just in from the right-hand touch line. Antonio Rago for FC Edmonton. Chips this ball up to the edge of the penalty box. It might drop for Pinto. Pinto just couldn't bring it down. Just wouldn't drop for him there. And the ball is going to be won back, though, by Adam West for FC Edmonton. And now on the left, the right-hand side, it's Lamb. Lamb forward to Porter. Porter... Got a chance to cross, but he's tackled by Capone Lowe. Watched him well there. And Lowe just plays that ball down the left-hand side. There's an offside flag anyway against uh, Zach Shalovsky. And it will be FC Edmonton possession.
Augustin with the ball and tried to slide it forward for Seiko, dispossessed by Amir Lowry. Augustin looking to win it back, but just a touch too aggressive there, the free kick given against him. Yeah, in a, in a way, uh, Sean Seiko's fortunate that pass never got to him because I think that would have been uh, what you call the hospital pass had uh, that got you got to his feet. Uh, he would have been uh, in a lot of trouble there with a defender right coming on him on a very slow-moving ball that he has to wait to come to him. Stockley for Carolina chips this one up to the edge of the area. Hamilton gets in a header. Still a chance for Carolina on the edge of that penalty box. FC Edmonton trying to win the ball back, but it's Elenio that's got it on the right wing. Chips it up to the far post, and Hamilton flicks the header away very well. Lamb keeps it in play, and Lamb will clear down the right-hand side of the field, but he's given that ball straight back to Carolina to burst. Forward to Lowry. Lowry keeps it in, but in fact, in the end, it's going to be a throw-in for FC Edmonton. And this is uh, where they were trying to work it on the edge of the penalty area. Tackled by Van Leerdam, that could have gone anywhere. And when the cross came in, very good defending by Hamilton. Yeah, Hamilton is the, you know, clearly Edmonton's best player in the air there. And he does well to not just to get ahead to the ball, but get that away from the area and not leave that anywhere dangerous. Uh, manages to, to, to flick that back into the corner and did not go for a corner, which is a relief for Edmonton because that's something that they've struggled with all season but uh, as well to not put it anywhere near goal as well for Carolina to pounce on. Last minute and a half of the first half and it's nil-nil at Clark Stadium. Seiko trying to win the ball just on the edge of the penalty area and he's done that and has played a good pass to the right wing. It's Lamb in possession, Lamb's cross to the edge of the area. Seiko just couldn't get his head on it. And in fact, in the end, Van Leerdam trying to win the ball back for FC Edmonton, but it's a break down the right wing here for Schreiber. Schreiber to the edge of the penalty area. He's right to the goal line now. In comes the near post cross of Pong, trying to win it back. Good tackling by Dominic Pong, and in the end, the speculative shot by Capono Low goes wide of the post, all along the ground. Minute to half time, nil-nil. As Elenio pushed forward there, we saw Adam West, who was, uh, I guess, a bit of a surprise starter because he wasn't in the starting lineup on paper that we got, uh, but uh, had to be on his horse, and it's good to see because he's been out with a hamstring problem the last couple of weeks, and uh, so far so good with him uh, getting, through the, getting through the match. Hamilton chasing the ball back to his own goal here and a header down for Monsalve, who claims it well. Very windy first half, Carolina with that advantage, but approaching half time, still no goal so far. Monsalve kicking the ball against the wind and looking for Porter. Porter with the ball bouncing right beneath him has done enough to get a challenge in there to win it back, but the referee deciding it was unfair on his part, and it's a free kick to Carolina. Last uh, couple of minutes of this uh, half been very choppy again, sort of like the first five minutes that we saw a lot of uh, a lot of uh, one, two, give away the ball, and one, two, give away the ball. We're seeing here maybe the best spell of possession the last few minutes from Carolina, and that's four or five passes. Throw in for FC Edmonton, right-hand side. Rago to the captain, Paul Hamilton, takes a left-footed touch, and then right-footed plays the ball down the right-hand side, all in the air. It's with Porter. Porter brings it down, pushes to the right-hand side. And it's Lamb. Lamb drilling this one beautifully through for Pinto. Pinto with a chance, right footed. Terrific save by the keeper. Just got a hand on it and denied that thrilling counter attack by FC Edmonton. Still nil nil. That was a fantastic save by Burst there. That is a, uh, a great ball by Matt Lamb that uh, judges it, uh, gets it the weight just perfect for Pinto to run onto. And there's that, that what you have to do in this wind drive it low, and Pinto gets behind. But a great stop. Great Corner coming in save. from Seiko. Headed away by Carolina. And the chance pretty much gone there. Still an opportunity for them to rebuild on the right-hand side. Last, uh, well, it's really time added on now in the first half. Augustan with the possession. Right wing for FC Edmonton. A Pong's cross coming into the near post. Still dangerous in there, bobbling around. Cleared by Stockley. And out to that left-hand side again, Carolina still competing for the ball. They've got themselves a free kick. What a good chance that was for Pinto for FC Edmonton, but a very, very good save by Ray Burse in goal for Carolina. That means it's still goalless, and it's Shriver playing the ball into feet, the edge of the area. Shalovsky now to Elenio, running off him to the left wing. 
They've got men in the box. Up goes the cross to the far post, headed away by West, who's uh, played well in his pre first performance of the season for uh, FC Edmonton. West going up again this time and reading it nicely because deciding to turn and just blast that one into touch. That's a good bit of defending. And that takes us to the halftime break. And it's nil-nil at halftime. I think Edmonton can look at the half glass empty, half glass full here. Uh, they have had the two best scoring opportunities of the game of both felt to Yashir Pinto's feet and Ray Burst has got the better of him both times. So Edmonton would be disappointed by not scoring. But at the same time, with this wind advantage that Carolina had in the first half, I think Edmonton would be happy saying that, uh, hey, we, uh, we're at nil-nil, we're, we're drawn, and now we're going to have the big win advantage in the second half. So it's, uh, it's a little bit of one and a little bit of the other, but uh, I think uh, it, that Edmonton and Yashir Pinto will be going into the dressing room talking to them, to at least talking to himself a bit about a couple of golden chances he had to score. Some reaction coming up at halftime for you in just a moment, but reflecting on that first half, Steve, certainly a much tighter and more disciplined uh, effort by FC Edmonton this afternoon. Yeah, really, David Monsalve didn't have much to do because uh, uh, the best scoring chance we saw from Carolina was a header that went wide. I don't think he actually really had to make a save in that half. Let's go to the touchline and speak to the coach for Carolina, Colin Clark. Thanks for joining us, Colin. Yeah. What was your thoughts on that first half? Uh, oh, I thought, uh, obviously, we had, for me, the bulk of the possession, or a good 60-70% of it, but uh, they ended up with uh, two of the better chances. How significant is the wind down there, Colin, as far as uh, it, it seemed to be the blowing your way in that first half? Yeah, blowing our way, but it's taking the ball out of play on this surface. I think it'll be better going the other way, into the wind a little bit more. It'll hold up and, and keep things in play. And, uh, we just need to be uh, you know, better in the final third with the ball. So tell us about your, just a, f a few thoughts for the players at halftime, what you'll be talking about. Yeah, we've got to keep passing when we get the opportunity to. Uh, you know, we've got to win the battle in the middle of the park. The ball's bouncing around. But once we get it down and pass it, we've got to be better with it in the, in the final third to get in behind them and, and make some clear-cut chances rather than just shots from the top of the box. Thank you, Colin. Thank you. That's Colin Clark, the coach for Carolina. And we will be speaking to Harry Sinkraven as well, the coach for FC Edmonton. He'll be joining us uh, on the touchline in just a moment, uh, hoping to see his uh, team get their first win of the season. And Harry's with us now. Uh, thanks very much for joining us, Harry. W give us your reflection on the first uh, 45 minutes for your team. Well, it's, uh, if you see the whole game, uh, it's, it's a lot of possession for both teams. Uh, it's a lot of fighting for second balls. The wind is uh, also a big factor. Uh, uh, so it, it's it's hard to play through the midfield because they also want to press us there. So uh, what we have to do the second half is more balls behind their defense because they are vulnerable over there. And we had two big chances, uh, twice um, Yashir and twice the same moment. Uh, a running player, balls behind their defense. So we have to do that more in the second half. And just tell us about the wind as a factor, Harry, in the second half when it's uh, it'll be behind your backs. Is that a good uh, advantage for you? Uh, yes, and, uh, because it's, 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 it's easier if you have a chance shot, uh, you can shoot from 20, 25, 30 yards. Um, it's a little bit harder when you have to build up. Uh, so it's, it's important to play diagonals balls and not uh, balls just straight up front because then uh, the balls will go uh, after the, the back line. But if you play diagonals, yeah, then it's uh, tough for them. Thank you very much, Harry. Okay. That's Harry Sinkraven, the coach for FC Edmonton, looking for those diagonal balls over the top because he feels like there have been chances when FC Edmonton have played that way in the first half. It's half time, the second half coming up live for you, but uh, Clark Stadium after the first 45 minutes. FC Edmonton nil, Carolina Railhawks nil. Seiko runs through and buries the right-footed shot. 
There's the rebound for Porter. Hamilton gets there and buries the header. Oh, it's a super goal. Ya lo hace, pierna derecha, directo al arco, golazo, golazo. Welcome back to Clark Stadium, Edmonton, halftime. Nil-nil, no goals so far, but let's take a look at the highlights from that first 45 minutes. Chances at both ends, really, in the first half. And the best one being for FC Edmonton, Pinto's effort. Let's take a look at those highlights. Here we go, early play uh, with Carolina. And definitely some uh, chances for them in the early stages too. Yeah, some good possession, but like Colin Clark was saying that uh, their shots have been sort of limited to the top of the box from 20, 20 some yards out. We're seeing here some good defensive play by Edmonton getting back, getting compact, not allowing a lot of passing or shooting lanes for Carolina there. And here you see Kyle Porter skipping by the defender and being able to, to present a ball, but just a little bit long on the post and uh, Seiko not being able to get uh, towards goal. Paul Hamilton with some strong defending for FC Edmonton. And we've seen him play well this afternoon. Porter. Some good uh, breaks forward by him. Tried to look for the penalty on that occasion, but referee having none of that one. No, and he's absolutely right there. There was, uh, there was no foul there whatsoever. That free kick just needed a touch. No one really getting there, but uh, certainly a chance. And then this one, probably the best uh, move of the match. Pinto, nice little pass to Porter. Gets it back, real good chance. Real good chance, and uh, Porter did really well to shield the ball and get, get ahead of defender here. Not allow uh, Kraus to kick that ball away from him. And, uh, but Ray Burst does well. You see how far off the goal line he is there when he makes that save. He's, he's really challenged the shooter. And uh, John Kraus there with a fantastic chance on a corner. We've seen too much with Edmonton in the, this year and uh, he had an open header that uh, he sent wide. Some strong defense uh, from Paul Hamilton, the captain in that first half. That one, another critical clearance. Defense uh, looking much more of a tighter unit today and just uh, watching that one nicely away from the danger zone. And here's that great ball by Matt Lamb. Just, uh, just a perfect for this win to keep it low gets that one bounce in front of Pinto and uh, you know this is again a great save by Burst look how far he is off the goal line to, to challenge that shot and you wonder maybe does Yashir when he has that advantage does he try maybe to step around the keeper rather than shoot uh, with the keeper coming at him so hard but uh, you know it's a it's a hindsight thing it's a moot point now Burst with two great saves and really you can argue he's Carolina's man of the match so far. FC Edmonton nil, Carolina nil at halftime here at Clark Stadium. Coming up, that's what we've got next. May 12th at Atlanta, then at San Antonio, and then a homestand, San Antonio, Atlanta, and Fort Lauderdale coming thick, thick and fast after that. The San Antonio matches should be really, uh, really fascinating. The, the Scorpions won their second in a row. They're near the top of the table as an expansion team. They're sort of where Edmonton was last year, where they surprised everyone off, off the bat. And uh, just some great support we've seen in Texas for the San Antonio Scorpions. Uh, just been a great story for NASL and maybe the story of NASL so early in the year. Steve Sandor and Gareth Hampshire live from Clark Stadium where it's goalless at halftime between FC Edmonton and Carolina. The second half coming up live.
balón ha portado en vantaggio a Igi al primo minuto del segundo tiempo. Tenta Tremo Balá, Adrián Edzori, Rai Ahar. Polo Internacional de apareceu para receber capaz da ligação na direita com o lançamento para Neymar. Isso é o Inglês, o Inglês Club agora, é o Manchester United. Carasso foi bem partido, essa foi, ele não foi longe do tudo. Mas, por enquanto, o Inglês não existe. Já o faz, perna direita, direito ao arco, golaço, golaço. Welcome to NASL Weekly Rewind. For week four, let's start midweek action in Fort Lauderdale, Lockhart Stadium. The Strikers take on the Puerto Rico Islanders in a rematch of last year's NASL semifinal series. 15th minute, Lance Lang into the area. Ali Hassan, first goal of his professional career. Nice finish by Hassan. Great cross from the left side by Lance Lang. Later on, first half, another opportunity for Fort Lauderdale. Walter Restrepo to Hassan. Fantastic finish by Hassan. Look at this footwork by Restrepo. Freeing himself, finding the open man. Hassan second of the game into the second half. Great finish by Jay Needham here. The Islanders clawing their way back into this. Just minutes later, they think they equalize. Call back for an offside. Jay Needham just a fraction offside. The Islanders, potent offense, continue to get themselves back in the game. Fania to Foley, lays it past the Lasers to the far post. You see Foley get behind Nicardo Blake on the breakaway, and it's two to two. But then, match in the dying moment, Scotty Lorenz, what a pass. Ali Hassan's third of the game, a hat trick for the local product from Weston. What a great game for Ali Hassan, three goals. His first three professional goals all coming in this match, including the late winner. Strikers win 3-2 at Lockhart against Puerto Rico. What a great game for Ali Hassan. Off to Atlanta we go, Silverbacks Park. The Silverbacks looking for their first win of the season against the Minnesota Stars, the defending NASL champions. Kyle's trying to find McManus, does a good job poking the ball loose. Sergio snap, gets it to Navia, comes in on sides for the shot of the goal! With his fourth goal of the season, Navia strikes again for Atlanta and the Silverbacks on top. 64th minute, Tercios comes up big again. Steals it, crosses it for Navia. Great save, goal line clearance for Navia follows up the miss. It's 2 0 now. The NASL Offensive Player of the Week scores his second of the game. Looks like Atlanta's in full control of this match at this point, 2 0. But just minutes later, 66th minute, Minnesota comes back. Amani Walker with a great finish. Amani Walker putting it past Ilias. That's his first goal of the season. Miguel Ibarra with the cross on that. The Silverbacks pleading for an offsides call. They're not going to get it. David Santa Maria comes into the game for Atlanta in the 75th minute. And in the 78th minute, he scores his first goal of the season, putting it past Van Opel. Well done. 3 to 1, Atlanta. Not much time left for the defending NASL champions. But they weren't done yet. Much like last week, they had a comeback in store. Devin Del Doe, the hero last week, scored the winner in Edmonton. Great finish here, getting it past Ilias. And then, Justin Davis, one of the great goals you will ever see. Again, numbers as Minnesota regains possession. And the shot and the goal is scored in stoppage time. And that one will be a heartbreaker here for Atlanta. Heartbreak for Atlanta at home. Heroic finish there for Justin Davis. Again, Minnesota at the death, rescuing a result. Off the carry, North Carolina, we go. San Antonio Scorpions seeking their first win in franchise history. First half, opportunity here. Nick Zimmerman deflected into the goal by Jason Gary, but he was deemed offside. To see Gary in an offside position nullified that goal. A few minutes later, Sattler with an acrobatic save. Gary with the follow, but no luck there for Carolina. What a save by Daryl Sappler. Late first half, Jose Soto beats Ray Burst, but hits it off the crossbar. It's still scoreless at halftime. We go ahead to the 82nd minute. Harm keeps this one, lays it over to Bayona. Harms is in! And it's a goal for San Antonio! Harms, Ray Burst, 1-0 San Antonio at this point. The Scorpions look to hang on to their first ever victory a couple opportunities at the death. Off the crossbar, cleared by the Scorpions. They're gonna hang on for the 1-0 victory. A first in franchise history for San Antonio. Off to St. Petersburg we go. The interstate rivalry within Florida, Fort Lauderdale and Tampa Bay. Renewal of this rivalry. 53rd meeting between these teams. 22nd minute opportunity for Tampa Bay. Matt Glazer though, with a nice save. 
Tampa Bay would create a number of chances in the first half. Savage looking on his left foot. Back post. Onside is Claire. We got a shot and a goal. And Claire on the pass from Keith Savage has given the Rowdies a 1-0 lead. Keith Savage, son of a former striker, setting up Matt Claire, the son of another former striker. Port Lauderdale with an opportunity. That's Restrepo dribbling through several rowdy defenders, but Agnella, nice save. Back wide, now in the ball and room to turn. Top the 18, now he's in the penalty area. He stumbled and now he's tripped and we have a penalty kick. Mike Ambersley will step up to take this PK and he gets Glazer going the wrong way, finishes it, 2-0 Tampa Bay. Port Lauderdale wasn't done yet though. Abe Thompson laid on in the 90th minute. Nice cross, Restrepo into the air, finishes it, pass at Nella. Port Lauderdale has life at this point. It's 2-1 Tampa Bay, but. Sonia gets it on, Ambersley. Gets it, he's free in the box. Glazer's out on him, Ambersley cuts it back. He's cutting the cross, he's gonna give it to Savage. Who says it scores? And that's three to one, and good night! So the 53rd renewal of this rivalry sees the Rowdies win their fourth straight against the Strikers. Three to one victory for Tampa Bay. That's it for this week's Weekly Rewind. We'll see you next week. Welcome back to Clark Stadium, Edmonton. The second half about to get underway. Nil-nil at halftime. FC Edmonton playing with the advantage of the wind now in this second half. They were against a very strong wind in that first half. Now it's with them. The coaches of each team don't agree whether it's an advantage or not. They, they both, uh, in fact, the Carolina coach thinks he's got the advantage against the wind, playing it low and getting the passing game going. And Harry Sinkgrove, and we heard he wants to see diagonal balls over the top. It's Carolina who will get us underway in the second half. They're attacking the goal to our left, all in orange, and FC Edmonton all in black. Carolina get us underway, immediately playing a ball to the right wing, but that will be Seiko who will clear straight up the middle of the field. It'll drop down for a pong. A pong playing a white-footed push pass to Rago. Now Hamilton, Hamilton forward. Looking early, straight away for those balls over the top for Pinto. Haven't been able to release him so far. And it's a header from Augustan in his defense. Gets that through the middle of the field. Augustan going up again, playing this one, volleying it over the top. Pinto chasing it away by Stockley to the left-hand side and Adam West. West with the ball at his left foot, chipping that one down the line. Corey Elenio intercepting it for Carolina, but West doing the same thing, getting it back for FC Edmonton. It's still with Carolina, with Nurse though, to the right-hand side, and now Lowry. Nice through ball by Lowry. Chance for Chilovsky to just cut in field. Hamilton got a trailing boot on him, and Augustan can bring the ball away, and that's well played by Paul Hamilton. Nice one-two between Van Leerdam and Porter. Now through towards Pinto. Pinto back in field for Porter. Porter not happy with the pass. It wasn't the best and Carolina break up the play. Nil-nil still so far. In, uh, in that both instances with Shalosky and Pinto, we see strikers making poor decisions when they've got some great chances here. Shalosky uh, on his chance, the ball gets through Hamilton's legs, that through ball, and Shalosky's in, and he slows down and stops like he wants to step inside, and he actually allows Hamilton to catch him. That's, that's not the right play. He's got to shoot that ball. He's got to take that onto his foot. He's got to have a go. He's got, he's got a one-on-one -on -one with David Monsalvi. Why would you slow down and allow the defender to catch you from behind? And then in the case of Pinto, he has the ball going up the wing. He's got speed. He's got to keep running with that ball. I mean, instead he slides a, a poor pass to Kyle Porter that's nowhere, nowhere near him and he surrenders possession. So both great chances that, uh, that teams have had that have been spurned by some poor decision-making decision -making by the forwards in each case. Nil-nil still, and we've played two minutes of the second half. We're live on the Team 1260 and streaming live on cbc.ca. I'm Gareth Hampshire, 
alongside Steve Sandor, FC Edmonton attacking the goal to our right, all in black. And Seiko making a break to the edge of the Carolina penalty area. Carolina in orange colors today. No goals so far, and Augustin pedaling back towards his goal with the header away from the danger zone. Drops to Apong. Apong to the left-hand side. Seiko has possession. Back to the middle, and Apong. Apong switching play to the right flank, and Lam looked to be a great pass when it left his boot laces, but it just had a bit too much purchase on it with this win. Runs into touch, but that's the diagonal ball that Sink Graven was talking about. Yeah, and that's something that uh, that we're going to see them probably try more and more now that that uh, that they've got the advantage going the other way with the wit with the wind, and we'll uh, be looking for more of those plays. And they need to involve Matt Lamb more. He hasn't had a lot of touches to the ball, but I found when he has had touches, he's done some effective and good things with it. They need to find him a little more on the outside there and uh, and get him involved in the play. Lamb again, who plays a ball in field for Rapong, and now Elia Van Leerdam, Rapong juggling with it a little bit, and. As a result, because he lost possession there, he had to rather reach for the tackle and brought down his man, Palacio, free kick to Carolina. Yeah, that's uh, a situation. You get it, you get in late, you're frustrated, you lose the ball, and you need to take the foul. Uh, Dominic Apong, though, uh, it doesn't get a card there in that situation, which is, uh, which is lucky for him. And uh, we'll see uh, how uh, Carolina does pushing that ball forward. We're already seeing a little bit of a lower drive there on the uh, on the ball in Hamilton with a clearance Seiko heading that one along towards Pinto beaten in the air drops for Augustan forward ball onto the chest of Porter Porter moves in field nurse with a sliding tackle wins it back for Carolina now the captain Capono low right-footed clearance which Hamilton volleys straight back into Carolina territory and Kraus heads it into touch it will be a throw in for FC Edmonton nil nil the match so far Rago's throw in Picked up by Hamilton. Hamilton along the ground for Van Leerdam to the left wing and Adam West. West in field for Seiko. Seiko picking out Van Leerdam on the left wing, but he's dispossessed. And uh, good battling for the ball back by Carolina and Corey Elenio clearing it forward. He's finding his clearance held up in the breeze though. And away by Hamilton back down for a Carolina throw. Yeah, and that's going to be that little bit of adjustment now that Carolina's going to have going forward is those balls that they hang up in the air as Edmonton found in the first half, aren't going to get aren't going to get by the back four, and they're going to have to be playing those balls low, like Edmonton was later in the half once they got used to that condition. And uh, Edmonton at the same time has got to adjust, knowing that those low, powerful balls up the middle are just going to go into touch now. And you see that one, that ball just sprayed nowhere near where uh, I believe Elenio had wanted to spray that ball out to on the long ball up towards Shalosky. And that's not what Colin Clark wanted to see uh, when we talked to him at halftime. He wants them to keep the ball on the ground to keep it away from the wind. And he actually he's talked about keeping possession, playing possession soccer. So uh, not that those uh, those long balls now against the wind become exceptionally low percentage plays. You're almost praying that uh, the first touch from a defender is so bad that you can get the ball back. But uh, you're really uh, you're really just playing the ball and almost just giving it back to Edmonton by playing those long balls now against the wind. Edmonton's got possession here with Porter. Porter forward to Pinto, gets it back, edge of the area. Porter soldiering on and got help from the right-hand side and Lamb. Lamb tries to cut inside his man. He's left the ball behind, but goes back a second attempt. Gets the cross in, it's charged down. It's out for a throw in for FC Edmonton. There might be some uh, treatment required for Capono Lowe, who took that challenge there. Slight stoppage as the ref checks he's okay. And to be fair, uh, when Colin Clark says that uh, he feels that going against this big wind is a is actually an advantage, I've heard I've heard coaches in the past tell me that going down to ten men can be an advantage. You know, it's all the, the psychological game, and he's going to play that, and I'm sure he's going to tell his team that uh, just to get them feeling good about themselves for the second half. Throw in for FC Edmonton, still looking for the first goal in this match, and it's with Rago right hand side, slipping the ball back to Hamilton, right footed curling ball forward which Pinto controls, but the flag is up for offside. And it's a Carolina free kick, still nil-nil at Clark Stadium. Yeah, it'd be a frustrating first half for you, sure, Pinto. I mean, strikers love to get, they, they, you know, they're paid to cash in those couple of chances they're gonna get a game. Uh, it doesn't always come uh, uh, often. You don't always get a chance to uh, redo, redo it once it's gone wrong. And uh, he had two fantastic chances in the first half and both times uh, Ray Burst, uh, the, the Carolina keeper, got the better of him. 
Hamilton in a sliding challenge inside his own penalty area here, losing out, and they recycle it to the right wing. Carolina shot coming in towards goal. Chance there as Monsalve comes out for the ball. Goal mouth scramble in front of him here, and still the chance, but Palacio puts it behind. It's going to be a corner kick, but somehow FC Edmonton keep the ball out. I don't know how that ball stayed out, but Ilya van Leerdam comes back and somehow just makes himself big enough without fouling anyone just to keep that ball away and to not allow a shooting angle into the goal that David Monsalve had vacated and then the goalkeeper had fallen down and couldn't get back. Corner coming in from the left-hand side. This is dangerous again. Shot going over the crossbar. The flag up. The whistle's gone. And it's a goal kick for FC Edmonton. Breathing again after hanging on just moments ago. And that was easily Carolina's best chance of the game, but uh, Carolina was only able to turn that ball into the side netting, and you see on the scramble here, the, the, the ball comes out, and Monsalve comes out, and it just, just the, the bounce there takes it by him. He's down and out, and Van Leerdam, just by kicking away and staying on that ball big, just delays Carolina enough to allow us enough Edmonton men to get back there and, uh, and cover up for Monsalve, who was scrambling to get into goal. Yeah, Van Leerdam takes a lot of credit for saving that goal there in that goal mouth scramble and it remains nil-nil. It's a throw in which Pinto takes on the chest from Rago and it's another throw for FC Edmonton, right wing here. But the most important thing that Van Leerdam did is he did everything legally. He did it by just kicking on the ball and keeping his foot, uh, staying close to defenders. If he fouls someone in that situation or the ball hits his hand, that's a red card and a sending off for him, not just a penalty kick. So he does really well to stay composed and just to be a good defensive player and not do anything too rash. FC Edmonton nil, Carolina nil. Beautiful sunny Sunday afternoon, but a strong wind which is at the backs of FC Edmonton this half. They're attacking from left to right. Seiko loads of space. He's going to shoot from 30 yards. Oh, he scored! Sean Seiko! It's a beauty! Top corner, and he's broken the deadlock. It was going to take something special, and Sean Seiko unleashes a thunderbolt. FC Edmonton won, Carolina nil. And you know, Harry Sinkgraf is prophetic, because at the halftime, what did he say? That the, having the wind at your back allows you to have those 25, 30-yard strikes. And what's the goal that we see? A 30-yard strike. Ray Burst gets his hands to it, but he doesn't have enough power to push this away from goal. And as it goes right through his hands there, I mean, he's up. He's absolutely able to play that ball, and after a a couple of really outstanding saves. As good as that shot was, I'm sure Ray Burst will tell you, I should have pushed that one over the bar. The, uh, my hands were there, I was in position, and it went right through right through them like a wide receiver dropping a pass. It's, uh, it, it's a great strike by Sean Seiko though, and you know, this is the thing, you put the ball on goal with some power, you never know. You never know what's going to happen, and that's, uh, that's, that's uh, a, a great break for FC Edmonton, and again, a product of being of playing with the wind at your back that's a shot that he can't take in the first half that really is how to strike a ball you could hear the boom of the ball from the commentary position up here Seiko finding the stanchion the top corner it was a beauty and that separates the sides 1-0 for FC Edmonton and the crowd really liking that one yeah, that's uh, that's that's when it brings the, the the crowd to its feet when they see a, a moment of magic like that. They uh, all they're going to see is the, is the thunderbolt, and then they know that thing's going goalward. And when they see get by Ray Burst, you can see uh, just a great reaction from the crowd and a bit of relief now to get this lead again for Edmonton. But mind you, they did have a lead in the second half quite late against Minnesota, and that turned into a loss. So no one's going to be feeling overly confident right now. FC Edmonton trying to win the ball back this time with Rago, but it's going to be uh, won back by Carolina. They play it to the left-hand side, and Capono low. Got the ball at his left foot, being snapped at from behind by Lamb. Slightly unfairly for the referees liking Lamb. Just a genuine attempt for the ball there, but just uh, a, a touch too uh, aggressive. And the referee just having a word with him, and it might actually result in a yellow card here, which looks a little harsh, I think. Uh, he is going to get a card, Matt Lamb. I think, I think this is for a persistent fouling, though, because I think uh, the, the referee there, he pointed to a couple of spots on the field where I saw you do it there, I saw you do it there, and this is uh, one of those uh, cumulative, I've warned you once, I've warned you twice, I've got to put you in the book now situations, because you're right, that foul by itself probably wasn't bad enough for a card, but this is uh, one of those things where, you know, he's, 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 he's 
he's racked up a couple of fouls. The referee's noticed and has finally said that's enough. 1-0 to FC Edmonton. The free kick played to the left-hand side and Amir Lowry gets it back for low. It's a good cross that he's weighed up to the far post. Terrific claim by Monsalve. Really good hands from him to come out and make the save. And he rolls it out for West. West, who I think's looked good in this game, given it's his first performance, gets the ball back. And he's linking up on that left-hand side with Sean Seiko, the goal scorer. Seiko to the center half and Hamilton just touches it forward for the overlapping Rago. Rago forward to Lamb, gives him a bit of work to do, but Lamb checks in field and finds a Pong. A Pong just composes himself and plays the ball back to Hamilton. Hamilton's forward clearance is deflected. It'll be won back by Dominic Pong. Now Van Leerdam charging through the middle. Support on the left-hand side from Seiko, right on the corner of the box. Seiko right-footed, goes on! He's done it again! Sean Seiko, his second goal in the space of a couple of minutes. And FC Edmonton, all of a sudden, have hit four. Tunila. Uh, Sean Seiko probably wasn't satisfied with having one goal of the week candidate in Nani Estel. He thought, why not have a second? But this is all set up by a major mistake by Nurse in the middle of the park, right before that Leerdam gets the ball. He goes up and he challenges he challenges for a ball in the air with Dominic Apong and, and Matt Lamb well up the field, and he doesn't win it. It's not a challenge he has to make, and he leaves that midfield totally vacant for Van Leerdam to run into and to, to give all sorts of spakes for Edmonton to flow forward. It all starts with Nurse going forward on a ball that he shouldn't have to go forward on, and sometimes it's not, you don't have to challenge everywhere on the park. And, and Sean Seiko with a fantastic finish there, absolutely first class. And uh, I tell you, that's going to do wonders for Edmonton's confidence. Sean Seiko, beautiful curling finish. His first one was sheer power, and that one was absolute finesse. Two beauties in this match, and the uh, crowd really happy about this. We're into the last half hour, and FC Edmonton making this uh, advantage with the wind really pay in this second half with a 2-0 cushion. And Sean Seiko showing exactly why he was an NASL Best 11 player uh, last season. And this is a player who I strongly believe you know, we will be seeing, if not in Major League Soccer, back in Europe at some time in, in his career. Uh, just so much potential. And, uh, you know, a real leader here and a hometown hero. He's from this area. It means a lot for him to be playing here in front of uh, his hometown fans. But at the same time, it's a guy who's uh, been in the Middlesbrough youth system. He's played in England. Uh, has a lot of potential. Was on the Canadian Under-23 team that we saw at Olympic qualifying. You know, he's been around for so long, you forget that he's still so young. FC Edmonton in possession with a 2-0 lead here into the last half hour. Antonio Rago digging that ball out down the right-hand touchline. A curling 30-40 yard ball over the top, but it's picked up by Kraus. Kraus, the other player to have a yellow card in this match. Lamb for FC Edmonton. Kraus's forward ball picked off by Rago and finding Seiko. Seiko's, Seiko. Seiko's got to be feeling so good that he can think he almost shoot from anywhere right now. And... They're not going to want to give him that sort of time. Next chance, uh, he's on the ball by the edge of the penalty area. Carolina might be a little bit quicker to close him down. The wind, a big factor earlier in the second half, but uh, doesn't look to be as strong looking down at the flags at the moment. Lamb sneaking possession for FC Edmonton, playing a through ball to Pinto. Tried to flick it over the head of the defender and then chase onto it. It's cleared by Carolina. Hamilton winning it back bravely. In the air, good header. Now Rago, right-hand side, cuts in field. He's made a great break here. Rago is going to play it to the left wing. Beautifully to Seiko, he's on a hat-trick. Can he step inside the defender? Looks for the penalty, referee waves it away. And the corner given, but Seiko finding all kinds of room on the left wing there. And you just wonder how can he be so open after what he's done to Carolina in the, uh, in the last... Uh in the last five minutes or so. But look at the confidence Edmonton's playing with all of a sudden. Their first two balls, you saw Paul Hamilton there, powerful to a ball. You saw Matt Lamb sliding to a ball to get to it first and actually set up Yashir Pinto, who has actually tried to back heel a defender here. What we're seeing here is just a, a confident, confident team. And we're seeing it because of two wonder strikes from Sean Seiko that have absolutely got this team feeling good about itself, probably for the first time this season where they felt this good, this confident about a game. And, you know, this is a, a different Carolina team than last year, but this was a Carolina team that Edmonton struggled against last season. 
FC Edmonton with a corner kick from the left-hand side. They've just made some substitutions. In it comes from Seiko. It's bobbling around in there. Off the post and away by Carolina. Hamilton just couldn't get the touch and it remains 2-0. It should be 3-0 right now, but uh, Paul Hamilton a bit unlucky there with the ball going off the inside of the post, it looked like, and staying out. So right now, Carolina is just absolutely flustered. They've uh, looks like they've just totally lost their positioning and lost, lost uh, a real uh, sense of discipline out there. Apong swinging his boot at the ball from 30 yards, miskicked it, lifts it over the top this time. It's controlled well by Ray Burse, who has the ball safely for Carolina. He throws it over arm to the right-hand side, though, and gets them going again. A ball chipped forward, but it's going to be the introduced substitute for FC Edmonton playing the ball back to Monsalve. That's uh, Fabian Vorb, the uh, Haitian player that they signed this year, played at uh, Furman University, the NCAA. Uh, and a guy who's for the Haitian national team played both striker and defender. He can play all over the park for you, and uh, he's in now uh, for our first chance to have, really have a look at him this year. And replacing Adam West, who played well today. Adam West, but you know, you know he can only play maybe about 60 minutes coming back from the hamstring injury. But a guy that we thought at the start of the year was going to be a starter with this team, and he really showed what he can bring. A lot of stability to the back line today. Uh, and I was very impressed with him. I'm with you on that, that uh, snuffed out a lot of attacks and was good going forward as well. And also Chris Cooey is in the match, and he's replaced Van Leerdam. Yeah, and this is a little bit uh, of stealing up defensively, even though I think Van Leerdam may maybe the defensive play of the match for Edmonton. Earlier on, before the Seiko goal, if you remember, standing his ground and allowing, uh, or basically allowing Edmonton to scramble back and get men into the goal to, to, uh, to fill in for David Monsalve, who was out of position there uh, on when Caroline looked to have an open goal. So uh, he did very well there, but Chris Cooey will, will add a little bit more defensive steal to, to, to Edmonton now that they're looking to protect a two-goal lead. Here is Cooey on the ball, pushing it to the right-hand side, and Porter, Porter is dispossessed, and Carolina have possession back. Amir Lowry going back towards his own goal, though, under pressure from Cooey, who harries him well, and that's what he's there to do now for the next 25 minutes of this match. There's a substitute for Carolina. Ty Shippelane has come on for Shalovsky, has been their change in this match so far. 2-0 for FC Edmonton, throwing down the right-hand side for Rago. Rago's got Lamb ahead of him, Lamb trying to pull a trick against the defender, takes him from behind, he's already got a yellow card, he's going to have to be careful. Free kick given to Carolina, taken up the line, away by Rago, Cooey heads it on, and it might drop in the midfield for Porter, but in fact he's penalised for a push. Free kick for Carolina, trying to get back in this match attacking the goal to our left and it's Corey Elenio in possession down the right hand side the flags up it's offside this won't count and the free kick given for Edmonton you know and I think uh, right now it's got to be a deep sigh of relief on the Edmonton side this game isn't done yet but it's the first time they've had a two goal lead this season and with the kind of start that they've had. and This team has felt pretty unlucky on that first road trip of the year with uh, losing two one-goal games and then getting a draw in Puerto Rico uh, and then losing that wild 4-3 game to Minnesota. It's a team that feels it's a lot better on paper than it's, uh, than it's shown so far this year and they feel that uh, they are, uh, they're a lot closer than people think and uh, so far so good today because uh, once they got the win to their backs, they've uh, really started to dominate. And if we had questions between Harry Sink Ravens and Colin Clark's interpretation of how the win would affect the second half. Right now, it's uh, Harry's theory that's winning out. No question about that. Seiko's first shot, especially, really uh, letting that one fly with the wind. And the second one, a gorgeous curler. And that is the difference between the two teams, those two golden strikes by Sean Seiko. 66 minutes on the watch. It's 2 0. And FC Edmonton breaking down the left hand side again. And it is. That man, Sean Seiko, and he's run the ball into touch, though, throw in for Carolina. Yeah, and Sean Seiko's second goal. When it's placed like that, I don't think... And we talked about that on the free kick he gave to Paul Hamilton last week when they scored, or two weeks ago. You couldn't have, you couldn't have walked the ball and actually said, this is exactly where I'm going to put it, and actually thrown the ball from a few feet out to say, this is exactly where I want it to go. I mean, it's, 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 it's perfect and uh, really nothing that, that Burst could do about that ball. The first shot was hit with a lot of power and it went through Burst's hands. 
but uh, on the second one, a Ray Burst can be blamed for that. And actually, Ray Burst has made two excellent saves. Edmonton can really be up three or four nil, uh, based on uh, what uh, we saw Pinto miss in the first half. Free kick for Carolina, right hand side. Here's Chevrolet, the substitute. Ackley as well introduced, and he's in possession on the right hand touch line. Amir Lowry. Moving towards the goal line here, trying to go around the outside of Kui. Kui defending well, letting that ball run out for a goal kick for FC Edmonton. The goal to our left. Well, the crowd in much better spirits, the home crowd today, and uh, seeing two classic goals in the second half. The difference between the teams. We're live on the Team 1260 and streaming live on cbc.ca slash Edmonton slash soccer. I'm Gareth Hampshire alongside Steve Sandor. And we're into the last 22 minutes at Clark Stadium. And I think we look at Carolina now and compare them to Carolina of last year, the team that finished first overall in the league and really was the class of the league for the first two thirds of the season. What the, the one year contract in, in second division we see can do to a team. So many players left. When Martin Rennie left uh, the Carolina fold, many went with him to the Vancouver Whitecaps, many went to other clubs. Uh, the reason that Edmonton didn't lose a lot of players or didn't lose any players to MLS uh, last year, you know, was was basically because they signed players to longer-term deals and, and, and really want compensation. They put it out there. They've let teams know that if you want to come get our guys, you know, it's going to cost you something. And so far, you know, MLS hasn't bitten on that. And uh, But the, the, the thing is, is that if they want to develop players, they need to get some return for it as well. And I think NASL teams will learn as, as time goes on that that's got to be the model and that the one-year contract can, can lead to problems like Carolina. We're off to such a rough start with such a new team. Monsalve playing a clearance up the right-hand side. Lamb sails over his head, but he's got a chance to control it this time. Lamb is pushed down by Capono Low and a combination of himself and Nick Zimmerman, who's still arguing with the referee about the free kick that's been given to Lamb. It's a free kick from the right wing here, which Lamb and Rago are going to orchestrate. This is midway inside the Carolina half. Lamb plays it short for Rago. Hamilton now carrying the ball forward, right-footed. Crossfield diagonal ball to the left flank. That's exactly what Harry Sinkraven was talking about, and too dangerous for Corey Elenio. He heads it behind for a corner kick. 2-0 for FC Edmonton at Clark Stadium. And Sean Seiko goes in place to take this corner. Edmonton last time came very, very close hitting a goalpost on the last time they had a, a corner from this side. So but Carolina's got to look alive here because they could absolutely get buried if they get another goal here. Goes in towards the far post. They defend it well, Carolina, and it's headed out towards the left-hand corner flag, and they keep the ball in play and win themselves a throw in left hand side <laughs> and you know we've, we've really seen very little from Carolina going forward other than that one uh, chance early in the half with the ball bouncing around and Van Leerdam being able to hold off Carolina while that while the net was was empty but really not enough that we saw from Zaskolowski a former MLS player with the New England Revolution uh, up front he was really isolated for most of the game uh, when he did have his one uh, one chance, he decided that he wasn't going to shoot. He decided to hang up and he allowed Paul Hamilton to catch him from behind. But uh, just not enough offensive thrust from Carolina. And we know they scored three goals last time they played. We know what's in them. But uh, so far, Edmonton's done a good job of, of really limiting opportunities and not allowing uh, Carolina to, to get too many balls behind the defenders. See Edmonton in possession with Vorb to the left wing and Pinto. Pinto bit of a misunderstanding there with Seiko who wasn't moving the same way Pinto thought and Carolina have possession they trail 2-0 to FC Edmonton who will be in action again next Sunday against San Antonio Scorpions and again a 2 p.m. kickoff actually it's May 27th Sunday May 27th 2 p.m. is the next time there'll be a home match and that's uh, San Antonio's turn to come to town. Yeah, they're going to have a couple of weeks now, uh, with, and with that time, we're hoping that all the renovations that are going to be done to the stadium should be done in time of that May 27th home game, where we're going to see the beer gardens, we're going to see the stands on the other side. What you're seeing right now is a very temporary setup at uh, this new stadium that Edmonton's using at, uh, at Clark Stadium. 
what uh, we're going to have is some temporary stands, about 4,000 more seats, and uh, that's when we're going to hopefully see this club really blossom into a, it's a real powerful draw in the city of Edmonton when people see it's a great little intimate soccer park to come see, come see a match. Right now, though, that those plans were delayed because of some really late snow in Edmonton that caused the ground to be way too soft for them to install all the uh, fixtures they need to install. Kyle Porter chasing back towards his own goal here, the goal to our left, playing it back to Monsalve, who has to take it left-footed. It rebounds off the striker as he tries to clear it. Monsalve, fortunate that he gets the ball again. And he'll kick out of his hands this time, straight through the middle of the field, drifting to the left side, maybe aiming at Seiko there. Vor challenging forward, it'll drop for a pong. And now Porter, Porter doesn't manage to get past Lowry and that ball played right through the middle of the field. It's hanging up in the air again in the wind there. Hamilton doesn't win it, but Augustin sweeping up behind him plays the ball back for David Monsalve again. This time Monsalve playing it up to the right wing. Capono low for Carolina. He just drills this one down the left wing. Hamilton is again the man playing it away. Porter wins it back, finds Lamb. Lamb steps in field and gets clipped from behind by Nurse. Referee waves uh, play on for advantage. He did see the infringement and Lamb still struggling to get up. But in the meantime, the ball's out on the left wing with Seiko. Seiko playing it back to Augustin. And now in the middle to Kui. Kui chipping a lovely ball through the middle and Porter flags up for offside. Porter takes it towards goal and scores. Must have been a very close decision. It was a nice little chip oh, pass by Chris I'll Curry. tell you, looking at the replay here, I don't, I'm not really quite sure. That ball's lofted over, and we see the defender and Porter are running at the same time. I mean, it's hard to see on the replay where, when Van Leerdam actually strikes the ball, where Porter's at. But it was very, very close. That's a matter of inches. The only thing that gives the lines the benefit of the doubt are those football lines, because it does make it easier for them to make those calls because they have some points of reference on the field at which to look. But, uh, you know, here we have the ball played over top by Van Van Leerdam and it, I mean, sorry, uh, by, it wouldn't be Van Leerdam, it would be uh, Chris Cui, who uh, popped the ball over and uh, looked to be very, very close. It's a nice pass to it. He got some backspin on it, so it held up when it landed. And that must have been a very, very close decision for the linesman. It remains 2-0 to FC Edmonton. We're into the last... 15 minutes at Clark Stadium in Carolina trying desperately to get something going but FC Edmonton just pinning them in their own half at the moment. Yeah but to be fair if an Edmonton fan complains that that's a goal that was taken off the board uh, be aware that Ray Burst had seen that the, the flag was up and the whistle was blown he'd stop playing so if the ball hits the back of the net you know once once Porter touched the ball Carolina has stopped playing competitively. No flag this time though, Seiko through to Pinto. Pinto maybe had time to take it around the goalkeeper, but shot first time and Burst came out and denied him for a third time in this match. He's been one-on-one -on -one and every time Burst has stood up strong. Yeah, Pinto could be, it could be a hat trick and really this game could have a pretty ridiculous scoreline if uh, Yashir Pinto's got some finish. And it's gotta be a little bit concerning. I mean, Yashir Pinto's got a lot of talent, but he's been brought here from Colo Colo on loan to score goals. And, uh, you know, he's had now three golden opportunities where he's had Ray Burst basically at his mercy and maybe none better than that last chance. And he hasn't, he hasn't finished. Here we go again with Pinto, right hand edge of the penalty box. Pushes it for the overlapping Rago. Rago chipping up the far post cross. It just drifts over the angle and goes behind for a goal kick. You know, that's uh, a little bit nervous for Burst. He was caught hung up there, and, and I think he realized that that ball drops down under the bar. There's not much he can do about it. Antonio Rago's had a very solid game at right back. It was, uh, it was a regular starter last year. Looks to have lost his starting job. But uh, I think that, that Harry Sinkgraven's got to be thinking with Adam West and Rago playing today, that back line has looked much better, much more composed. And I know Kevin Hatchie missed with a red, is missing with a red card today, and Lasson doesn't start today, but I'm wondering if he's thinking in his mind, you know, if these guys won jobs, if these guys won the starting jobs, at least for next week. Stoppage in play for Ty Shippelane, who's down with an injury under a challenge from Chris Cooey, who got up to win the header. And again, I'm not sure if he just fell awkwardly. The crowd giving him some warm applause, though, there as he uh, gets some treatment from the trainer for Carolina. 
just goes up for the header there and maybe just uh, sort of arrived late as Cooey was following through. Looked uh, a little unfortunate. He's going to run off and then we'll uh, come back on, I'm sure. I think he's okay. He's just uh, clutching his right ribs a little bit there is Chipperley. 2-0 for FC Edmonton. Play will restart from a throw-in. We're live on the Team 1260 and streaming live on cdc.ca from Clark Stadium. And the ball uh, played back towards Carolina, just uh, put out of touch by, by Rago, and it will be a goal kick for Ray Burst from the right-hand side of the pitch. Last 12 minutes now as Burst holds this one up. Looking for the flicked header, but again, it's Cooey who's, who's quite strong in the air, winning that one. Rago forward to Porter. Porter just gets a yard from his man. Now finds Augustan to the left-hand side, and Fabian Vorb in field for Sean Seiko. On a hat-trick, two terrific goals today, and that's a lovely pass over the left-hand side to Vorb, but it just deflected off him, and Carolina come away with possession. Chance for them for a counter-attack with Schipperling, who's back on the field and playing the ball to the left-hand side. It's too strong. It's going to go out of play. Goal kick for Monsalve. And, you know, really thinking back to last year, too, and we know that Edmonton struggled a bit down the stretch. Actually struggled quite a bit down the stretch and uh, fell down to fifth place and then lost that playoff game 5-0. I can't think of a game probably since maybe August of last year where, where I've seen Edmonton look as composed and as in control as they have in this half. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the shades of the Edmonton team that we saw play in the spring of last year when they had got such a strong start on the NASL season. They're composed, they're in charge, they're having good spells of possession, they're winning a lot of challenges. Defensively, they're looking more composed than they've looked in, in a long time. And again, I think it goes back to having Rago and West in the back, and I think they've made a huge difference back there uh, today. And I think, uh, you know, they've given uh, Coach Harry Sinkratton a lot to think about uh, with Hatchie's suspension creating opportunities for them. Uh, and, you know, they've taken those opportunities. Chance here for Carolina, but uh, not really taken by Brian Ackley on the volley from about the penalty spot. Good opportunity. Took it first time just as the FC Edmonton defense uh, created a bit of a gap, and he'll probably feel like he should have hit the target from there. Yeah, he tried to take that the first time, and maybe that the, the, the thing that he needed to do there was to, to have a touch let that ball sit down on his feet a bit. Uh, no need to take that over your shoulder and then hit that ball. Uh, may as well try to, to put it down and then and then try to make a quick one to uh, shuffle your feet and uh, to get a, a decent shot towards goal. A little bit of panic there. And that was actually a fairly decent chance for Carolina. FC Edmonton 2-0 up at home into the last 10 minutes at Clark Stadium with a throw in for the home team. And there you go, John Kraus, who had a yellow card. He's been taken off. Deleuze is going to replace him. And we'll uh, restart play with this throw-in from the left-hand side of the field. Vorb with it. FC Edmonton attacking the goal to our right. And Vorb takes the throw short, looking for Seiko. Seiko jinx inside two. Beautiful play by him. Switching it to the middle and Cooey, edge of the area. Wide to the right and Rago. He's got an overlapping run from Pinto. Here's Yashir Pinto. Infield onto his left foot. Now to the edge of the box and Lamb, Lamb running forward and goes down in the penalty area. It's a penalty kick for FC Edmonton. Sean Seiko's running across to gather the ball. He's on a hat-trick and this is a golden chance for him to get it. Just a great uh, great vision by Yashir Pinto and a great late run by Matt Lamb into the box. And Pinto, you know, he's looked good on the ball. He's created all sorts of chances for himself. He hasn't finished and there's what you can see he can do. Uh, with a great ball into the box. I think it's Capono low there, is caught uh, a little bit behind. And, uh, you know, Matt Lamb, as I said, when he's when he's had the ball, he's been effective. And Sean Seiko's the automatic penalty taker for Edmonton anyways. This isn't the case of them trying to get him a hat trick. This is their normal penalty taker, and we'll see if he does it. Seiko runs up and coolly slots it into the bottom right-hand corner. A hat trick for Sean Seiko. The third goal for FC Edmonton in the match today, his fourth of the season, it's 3-0. That's uh, a great, great afternoon for Sean Seiko. It's got to feel really good for him. And, uh, you know, he's making our man of the match pick pretty easy today, I think. And, uh, you know, the penalty will be 
the easiest of the three, but uh, his placement's been fantastic, and Rayburst goes the wrong way. But uh, good shot low into the corner, and uh, just a great uh, great feeling for Sean Seiko. And you think of all the chances Edmonton's created, they're, they're actually full value now for this 3-0 uh, lead. Sean Seiko will get to take the match ball home. A hat-trick for him, and three pretty nice strikes. Carolina restarting play, but really for them now, it's uh, they're just uh, clawing and scratching to get something out of this match. The home crowd really in good spirits at Clark Stadium. FC Edmonton with a 3-0 lead, and it's Pinto again who's trying to make things happen. Goes for a run down the left-hand side. He's tackled, and Carolina get the ball back. And it's Elenio chasing down the right-hand side, but Jonathan Joseph Augustan who's looked very composed at centre-half, clears the ball down the left wing. Yeah, I think if you're Carolina, you're concerned, uh, because you gave three goals in your last game, you gave, you gave you had three again today, and uh, you're starting to think a little bit about, uh, you know, what's gone wrong in the last week with this club. I mean, it's been a, ter a, a terrible start to the year for, for the for the Real Hawks. But uh, the last week now, six goals in two games, not very good. Corey Elenio's cross up to the far post, a header towards goal but Hamilton gets it clear and then Porter helping it along but free kick uh, conceded by Porter about 25 yards from goal here for Carolina but uh, you know for the viewers that, that don't see us in the booth sometimes Gareth and I will uh, have little debates off, off, off mic about who we think should the man of the match should be I, I don't know if we need to have a debate today yeah there's the first one top corner should, should we call it now I think it's pretty clear, isn't it, Steve? Second was, one was a beauty as well. Yeah, the six minutes to go, but again, it was Nurse coming out of position there and allowing uh, Leerdam free or Van Leerdam free reign to go up the go up the side. But yeah, what can you do with the finish? You can't defend that. Free kick here for Carolina. The goal to our left. Zimmerman trying to curl this one over the wall towards goal. Monsalve just making sure and scooping that one wide, conceding the corner kick to Carolina. We're approaching the last five minutes. FC Edmonton with a 3-0 lead. Home at Clark Stadium today. Chippelain's gone over to take this corner to the right-hand side this time. It goes towards the near post. Hamilton with a diving header away from the danger zone. Capono low plays it back to the right wing. Elenio's overlapping. It's a good little break by him. Good cross up to the far post. And that ball flashes across the face of goal. Beats everybody and goes wide for a goal kick. Yeah, that was a, a good low ball, which you have to do with the wind. And we said it's not quite as tricky. It's a little, it's still there a little bit. Definitely not as strong as it was earlier in the half, and definitely not as it, as it was in the first half. But uh, a good low ball in, but uh, just no one be able to get in the end of it. Uh, Antonio Rago though was challenging there at that with Palacio at the end, and was trying to get in with a with a with a slide. And again, as I as I said, it's been a, 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 to me in my mind a, a a big improvement on the right side today of the defense with uh, the way Rago's been uh, playing there and giving a, a really good 90 minute or right now 85 minute account of himself. FC Edmonton three, Carolina nil. Last few minutes here, we're live on the Team 1260 and streaming live on the cbc.ca website. Long ball through the middle of the box, there uh, towards the edge of the box anyway, but Carolina defending it well, Cooey trying to win it back and Nice little overhead kick pass to the right flank by Matt Lamb, who again has looked good in this match and was instrumental in winning that penalty, which gave Sean Seiko his hat-trick goal. Capono low, clearing the ball up the left-hand side. Rago heading it back away. Porter challenging for it. Here's Seiko again. This time his golden touch just deserts him, and Corey Elenio will clear, but he's under challenge from Sean Seiko who's not given that one up. Elenio is able to get the ball forward though. Hamilton intercepts it this time. Now Shippelane wide to the right hand side. Carolina playing desperate football now with just a couple of minutes left on the clock. Vorb takes his time and picks a pass to Lamb, edge of the area. Lamb somewhat dangerously playing it back to Monsalve who clears safely and it goes all the way through to his opposite number Burse. You know, we were talking about some of the players that are playing well today. We talked, obviously, Seiko in the three goals, Matt Lamb and Antonio Rago. The thing they all have in common is they're all from the city of Edmonton. So it's, uh, it's a big thing for this club to have three players who are standing out today who are all local products. Some of them would have played against each other at some levels uh, coming up through minor soccer as well. 
Free kick to the far post for Carolina this time. Not a bad header by Schipper Lane climbing high at the far post, but couldn't keep it down. Over the top it goes, and it's a FC Edmonton goal kick. It was an excellent chance for Carolina. Schipper Lane got, did well. Schipper Lane got up on that, and uh, you know it's almost like he was up so high that it was hard for him to head that one down. But uh, if he would have been able to get that down at all, that's uh, that's an easy goal. But uh, it uh, the flight of the ball uh, got away from him there, and. Uh, Edmonton gets a, a bit of a let off because I'm sure they would love to uh, not just have the three goals but uh, with the kind of season they've had I think they and the defensive struggles they've had the last few weeks they would love to have that clean sheet as well. Lamb touching the ball forward to the left hand side Seiko edge of the area is within shooting range again he goes down under a challenge thought he would get the free kick referee saw nothing wrong with it and FC Edmonton win it back again though with Borg now Porter definitely has had more touches of the ball Porter since he's played in a deeper role in this match they in the end play that ball up the left hand touch line Seiko is not there though not the best pass and it's Amir Lowry bringing it away for Carolina Pinto still chasing all the forwards have worked hard it's been a very workmanlike performance as well from FC Edmonton today that ball they tried to play it inside the fullback but uh, once again Antonio Rago just recovering beautifully at the right moment and playing well and we saw him when he came on as a sub in the last league home game he had lots of space on the right hand side got forward with a lot of crosses and really all the back four and the goalkeeper have played well today it's looked a lot more comfortable there have been moments uh in the back but it hasn't been that kind of mass panic that we saw against minnesota uh that we saw in the back and uh you know, we talk about going forward, though, the chances that Edmonton's had. Not only have they scored three goals, but you have to think they've hit a goal post and they've had three great chances for Yashir Pinto where he was in alone. We could almost have two players on hat tricks today uh, had Edmonton had all those chances. But the, the golden chances Edmonton's created has got to be definitely concerning for Colin Clark and on the Carolina bench and as well. The uh, It's got to be a real good sense for Harry St. Gravin to know that Edmonton's created a lot today uh, offensively because there's been a lot of chances. Kenny Cachero's coming on for Kyle Porter as well. A final substitution by Harry St. Gravin. Fresh pair of legs for the last minute or two. 3-0 to FC Edmonton. Free kick for Carolina. Right hand side they take it. They'll try and get forward as quickly as possible. Schipper lane down the right hand side, challenging for the ball, but very good work by Seiko and he finds a pass to Lamb. Lamb trying to turn it around the corner for Rago. One back by Carolina. Chasing towards goal again, but Vorb gets this one away from the danger zone. Lowry in the left back position for Carolina, just in from that left hand touch line. He's Got Capono low with him, low pushing the ball down the left wing. It's well played by him. He finds Shriver. Shriver couldn't keep that ball in though, and it's a throw in in the right back position for Antonio Rago. Rago finds Pinto from the throw in. Pinto loses the ball though, and it's a throw in for Carolina. Cross comes shot towards the goal of Monsalve. He picks that one out of the air nicely. And we've got three minutes of added time. Yeah, but just want to nurse this one home. God, we feel really good about the effort today. Really, if there's there's anything that you might want to wish for as Edmonton fan is that maybe Pinto gets another touch and actually can get one into the goal. But otherwise than that, you've got to be really happy about this effort. Uh, this has been uh, Edmonton's by far best game this season. Pinto charging in towards goal from the right-hand side, tries to put the shot across, Burse, and Burse makes another save against him, his fourth, and this one a very good one too. Yeah, it seems like that maybe Yashir heard me there, that uh, thought he might have one more touch because he did get that other chance, and uh, but Burse does well to get low again. Every time Yashir went low, low on, uh, on Burse, and uh, maybe uh, next time you see these two teams play, you might see Yashir try to flip the ball up a little bit on Burst. We see he's come down low and charge them down every time. Well, he's got a good pair of hands, uh, Ray Burst, and he's uh, made several very good saves in this match at the feet of Yashir Pinto, and that was just another one. But it remains 3-0, Carolina trying to get back into this game, attacking from right to left, but Seiko, the hat-trick hero, in possession in the left back position he's just holding off his man there and uh, just shielding the ball and now plays it in field 
and they get it away to Vorb. Vorb, that's not the best pass, but it's won back by FC Edmonton again, and here's a Pong with possession. A Pong just coasting now down the right-hand side. He's got Lam in support. Rago's overlapping. Lam instead checks in field. Still going Lam. He's beaten two or three men. Passes it off to Pinto, left-footed this time, and Burse makes another stop. Pinto finding his range, but Ray Burse once again standing for. And that was another uh, another great chance for you, Sheer Pinto. Some great work by Matt Lamb, and just I, I think Carolina's almost switched off already. I think that uh, they're just waiting for the, the final whistle. No one is trying to make a challenge here, and uh, just allowing Edmonton all sorts of space. And uh, Edmonton's going to turn this to a shooting gallery right at the end and create some more chances. And uh, you know, it's 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 clear that Carolina is uh, they're just not really looking to. Uh, to work very hard at the end of this match to finish this one out because uh, just no one came in there to, to challenge challenge it in any way, either Matt Lamb or, or Yashir Pinto in, in, in either of those chances that they had. We're deep into stoppage time now. The corner kick turned into a goal kick. Carolina winning the ball back. FC Edmonton just trying to play out time. And that is time. The final whistle goes. A hat-trick from Sean Seiko. The first win of the season for FC Edmonton. A 3-0 win and an excellent home performance. Sean Seiko, the star. Yeah, I think we'll be talking to Sean in a minute or two here at the end of the match. Uh, but uh, a, a great performance by FC Edmonton who carved out a lot of scoring chances today. I, I would argue they've almost carved out as many scoring chances uh, today as they have maybe the last two three matches and I'm including a three goal performance against Minnesota in that in that but uh, Ray Burris actually did pretty well to keep the scoreline from getting really ugly on the Carolina Railhawks because this was really a game I mean Carolina had a couple of chances going the other way but this is a game that could have been five six nil nil post game show coming up three nil victory for FC Edmonton stay with us Welcome back to Clark Stadium, FC Edmonton 3, Carolina 0. A hat trick for Sean Seiko. And we'll be talking to Sean in just a moment at pitch side. We'll be bringing you reaction from uh, both teams in our post game show here. Live from pitch side, we'll talk to Colin Clark first, who's joining us for, from Carolina. Thank you for your time, Colin. Uh, we talked to you at half time. You mentioned no, Colin, it's Greg Shield. Okay, thanks, Greg. Uh, just give us your reaction to the game. Obviously disappointed. Um, bad second half from us. You know, we had a chance at 0-0 um, when um, 
we had two chances actually. Um, Zach Szalaski was clean through, and he, and he should have shot. You know, it was a great opportunity. And then they scored two goals within five minutes. You know, albeit the first the first goal was difficult from our point of view, a mistake. You know, from a, from from one of us, but we gave the ball away, and the the left winger had an unbelievable strike from from 30 yards. You know, it was a great finish. The second goal was a great finish for them as well. You know, but. Um, we had two or three chances in the second half, even at 2-0 where Brian Ackley had a shot over the crossbar, it could have changed the game as well, but um, bad goals from our point of view. Yeah, and how much of a factor was that win, Greg, uh, especially in the second half? It was a big factor, you know, you saw that the first half, you know, a lot of the balls running out, out, out of play, um, you just played it to your advantage, uh, Edmonton played it to, to their advantage in the second half, and we got caught out a few times. Thank you, Greg. No problem. That's a reaction from Carolina from pitch side. Amir. And we're going to talk to uh, Amir Lowry is uh, lining up down there. We'll be uh, talking to him as well from the Carolina point of view. Of course, Carolina yet to win a match uh, this season as well. They had high hopes going into this one, but uh, FC Edmonton managing to uh, come out of this with a 3 nothing win. Amir is going to join us uh, at pitch side. Thanks for joining us uh, down there, Amir. No problem. Um, tell us uh, the, the reaction from the players. Uh, you, you were right in it at half time and then it just slipped away in the second half. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's definitely a tough one to take. Uh, I thought maybe we had the better of uh, the possession in the first half and just let it slip away. Um, you know, it's just one of those. We conceded one. They got another one quick, and and uh, we we couldn't muster very many chances after that. And what about now f for you guys? Uh, what do you do to try and build up the confidence? You know, it's one of those things where the cohesion hasn't necessarily been there for us. Um, we're we're a relatively new group that's come together. So day in day out in training, we just got to keep keep going until it starts to click. I mean, I think we have the talent to to put it together. We just need to keep working. Thank you very much, Amir. My pleasure. That's Amir Lowry joining us uh, from pitch side, and Carolina talking uh, about uh, trying to change this, uh, turn it around for them. This is uh, unusual territory for them. They were top of the league most of last season. This year, bit of a struggle so far for Carolina and there they are second uh, from bottom those standings will change because of the win for FC Edmonton today which will get them uh, an extra three points and we'll hear what the uh, coach Harry Sinkgraven had to say about uh, that one uh, at halftime we talked to you Harry you talked about balls over the top using the wind to your advantage and it certainly looked like Sean Seiko did that with his uh, long range shot yeah. that got you going give, give us your reaction please well the first half we struggled a little bit in building up and uh, it was hard to get the balls up front. Uh, so the second half the approach was a little bit different. We said, well, play a lot of cross balls uh, and, and, and fight for the second ball. And then when we have the ball on their half, then you can pay your, play your position game. And, uh, well, and the guys did pretty well. And, and we also said, well, we have the advantage of the wind. So 25, 30 yards, take the shot. And uh, well, Sean uh, did a great uh, thing in that. And, the first goal was uh, well, was perfect. Second goal was also a good shot, and uh, yeah, it's a good uh, a good victory. Victory. A hat trick for Sean, and several chances for Yashir Pinto as well today. What made the difference, Harry, that you were creating so many chances? Well, it, it also has to do with uh, with opponent there, yeah? so um, uh, space behind their defense, and uh, well, the second half, if you uh, have a, a two nil, then yeah, they they press and they. They take risks, so there's a lot of space uh, in their back, and uh, yeah, we scored three goals. And uh, Yashir had uh, several chances, but Yashir is important for the for the team. Uh, you can see it. Uh, we can hold the ball uh, easy uh, easier with him up front, and then the rest of the team can uh, can support him. So uh, with him in the team, yeah, you get chances. He is he makes good runs, but also he is a target man, and uh, that's important for the rest of the team. Clean sheet as well for you, yep. uh, Harry, and a, and a different back four today. How impressed were you with uh, with the way your defence played? Well, we uh, we worked on that uh, the last couple of days uh, because uh, Wednesday uh, we were not, we were not satisfied about about uh, the defence and and, uh, and 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 the defence, but also midfield. So the connection between those two lines and today was much better um, uh, we, we played compact much much more than we did in the in the in the, the, the game wednesday the especially the first half 
So uh, yeah, the, the, the guys, they picked, uh, picked up the things we, we mentioned and that's, uh, that's nice. Thank you very much, Harry. Okay. That's Harry Sinkraven, the coach for FC Edmonton. We'll be hearing from the man of the match, Sean Seiko, in just a moment. A hat-trick for Sean today. Long range shot, a curler, and then rounding it off with a penalty kick for a 3-0 victory and three goals for Sean Seiko. Excellent performance uh, by him. That makes it four goals on the season for Sean so far. Sean's down at pitch side. We're going to talk to him in just a moment here. Sean, thanks, thanks for you joining us. Yeah, no problem, guys. Um, tell us about your reaction. Pretty, pretty good day for yourself today. What was, uh, what was the difference to, to bring the team to life today? I mean, uh, we knew going into the first half it was going to be difficult with this win, so uh, we weren't really discouraged going into halftime. We, we didn't uh, concede any goals, which was positive, and then we knew we were going to get some chances. So, uh, I mean, after I scored the first one, uh, kind of sparked us a little bit, obviously. So it was just good to get that first goal off and kind of get some, uh, some playing uh, team, team bonding, whatever, and then, uh, yeah two other goals after that. I mean, it's uh, just icing on the cake, really. Uh, I mean, it was my first uh, career hat-trick of professional, so it was obviously a proud day with all the family here and stuff. So, um, yeah, it was a good day for me. Excellent. Congratulations on that. Thanks a lot. D let's go back to that first goal. You got a little bit of space there. How much did the win play a factor in you taking that shot that early? Yeah, obviously we... Uh, I mean, we knew that uh, we had the win in the second half, and, and, and Harry told me, you know what, just just shoot if you have a chance. And last year I scored a few, so um, I just decided to hit it, and, and luckily it uh, went in. And the second one, a curler. Talk us through that one. I mean, Ilya played a good pass out there to the side, and, and I seen a bit opening on the far side, so uh, I just shoot, sh uh, shot on that side, and, and, and uh, the wind kind of grabbed it a little bit, actually. And then when you've already got two goals, uh, any doubt in your mind from the penalty spot? No, not really. I mean, uh, Pinto tried to call me off, but uh, <laughs> I told him, unlucky, my friend. <laughs> and, uh, and what about just sliding it into the right-hand corner? Just tell us about the, the way the penalty went. Yeah, I, actually, you know what? I kind of watched the goalie a little bit, and uh, Ray Burst actually kind of went the wrong way. So as soon as he went that way, it was pretty comfortable for me uh, just sliding on the other side, really. So tell us what this means now, Sean. It's a, it's a big uh, home victory, the, your first win of the year, hat-trick for yourself. What kind of a boost does that give the players to, to sort of get things going now? Yeah, that's the most important thing. I mean, we, I mean, we even came out in the first half not really that confident. I mean, we had the win against us, which was, which was tough, but when we came out and we scored that first goal, I could see the, the life in us. And, and now I just think that we're going to build on it and we're finally over that hump and we're not worried about now uh, if we're going to win ever, if, uh, if things are going to go our way. But... So now we're just going to go out and play, and I think uh, the guys, obviously this was huge for us, so I think uh, it, it's been been good today. Do you get to keep the match ball, Sean? Yeah, I might take it home, actually, yeah. <laughs> nice one. Well played today. Thanks a lot. That's Sean Seiko. Uh, hat-trick for him, the hometown hat-trick hero. Pretty nice uh, performance from him. His first career hat-trick, he just told us that. The next home game coming up for FC Edmonton is May 27th, Sunday, May the 27th. Again, a two o'clock kickoff against the San Antonio Scorpions. And by then the home atmosphere should be pretty good after this one. Let's uh, go back on the highlights from today. And there's quite a few highlights that we can uh, can go over here. Uh, first, uh, Carolina here with, the, with an opportunity. And, you know, we see Edmonton just taking away and doing a good job of, of just being compact in the box and not allowing a lot of passing or shooting lanes here. They're able to get balls away and really nothing here troubles David Monsalve in, in this whole sequence. Kyle Porter showing up well in this match. A good break down the line. This was Seiko's first sniff at goal. He would go closer, much closer after that. Free kick uh, for Carolina at the other end. Just needed a touch. No one got one. A goalless first half. Pinto, a couple of chances this for This is where him. you start thinking is, 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 is if Edmonton was, had just a bad luck again today because Pinto has a great chance here of a really beautiful give and go with Kyle Porter and, he, and, and Ray Burst with a good save. Really good chance for Carolina there, but Kraus not able to get the header on target. No, not and that, that was their best chance of the first half. And, and then, you know, we see Carolina you know, popping balls up. Paul, Paul Hamilton does a good job there with the clearance, getting that away from any sort of danger area. And we saw Hamilton uh, and Augustan playing a very nice uh, central defensive partnership today. And that's Hamilton just watching the danger, 
and uh, getting rid of that one. Very effective play. Matt Lamb, this is probably the best pass of the match. Just carved open the defense there for Pinto. Yeah, and then, but, but again, Rayburst comes out quickly, comes off his line to take away the angle. He does well to get his hands to the ball, and he knocks that away. Uh, but so this is Pinto, I think, uh, chance two of four or five that he had to score. And, uh, you know, he got in some great positions today and created a lot of chances for himself, but uh, didn't, 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 didn't score. Well, Carolina were definitely a threat in this game. Really playing with the wind. They uh, they had most of the play in that first half, as you might expect. But once again, FC Edmonton scrambling things away from the danger zone there. And then here's when we see uh, Seiko catch fire. What a shot that was. Yeah, Ray Burst is stepping backwards, and it just through the fingertips there. Don't know if he could have closed his hand. He couldn't get enough power to, to tip, tip that away. He does get a little bit of this shot, but just uh, like through the, through the hands there. And, uh, you know, he'll feel pretty bad about that. But at the same time, that's a laser beam. And we know from, from the football lines, that was a 32-yard drive. That was from the 32-yard line that that ball was struck. This was a nice one as well. Van Leerdam just into the path of Sean Seiko, and he can bend one too. He's not just all about power. That's a... That's a beauty. That's just a, yeah, just finesse. And, and he said the, the wind took that a bit, but uh, so it's, it's, it's a ni nice of him to actually give some credit to the wind there for helping with the bend on that ball. But uh, a lot of that comes from, from Nurse being out of position because he challenged for a ball he didn't need to. And you see him trying to catch up to the play there, but he should have been there with Van Leerdam and not allowing him that wide open pass to make to Sean Seiko. But he foolishly kind of came up for a ball that he didn't have much of a chance on. And sometimes it's not where, it's where you make the challenge. And the penalty, he actually said that he saw Ray Burst dive the wrong way, so he would slip it the other way. And that's uh, a beautiful hat-trick for Sean Seiko. And the first in his career timed it perfectly as well. They needed a win today. Hey, I like that he said that Yashir Pinto actually asked if he could take it. I, I, I have to admire the moxie of Yashir Pinto to even ask to, to see if he could take that shot, knowing that he had a teammate on the hat-trick. There's Sean Seiko, a hat-trick for him and a victory for FC Edmonton. 3-0 at home today, FC Edmonton's first win of the season. Join us for the next home game against San Antonio. Thanks for your company today. Good afternoon.